Hello everyone, welcome to the Charge Shot Games Cast. Each and every week, friends gather around, talk about the games they've been playing, things going on in their lives. They have with me, Justin. Look at my shirt; it's cute. Podcast listeners, look at my shirt. <laughs> Can you hear yeah. the shirt? It's it is speaking to you, actually. It is. Uh, it does yeah. say, "Hey, podcast listeners, listen <laughs> to my shirt." <laughs> <laughs> it's so dumb. Uh, for those listening and not seeing this, uh, it's a cat link with the uh, Navi. And he's like playing with it like it's a like it's a cat toy, like a yarn yeah. ball. Yeah, it's cute. And we have Ben Panzer Dragoon. Yep. You play Panzer Dragoon this week? What was I'm that, Randy, baby? Can you hear that? Mm, I just oh. listen. Can we get through this as quick as possible so I can go beat the two-hour campaign? Maybe, please. Maybe we maybe should take that porn hub ad. I feel like it fits. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I bring up my horniness on this show every fucking weekend. You know it. That's why we got the yeah. porn hub ad. Of, <laughs> yeah. of course, it's me. It's always me. Oh god, all those anime titties. Yeah, gotta go somewhere, man. Yep. Thank you. Shoutouts to hashtag not an ad. Hashtag soon to be. Maybe, an ad. maybe. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. Justin, you want Ben to start first with the, the, the Dragoon? Or do you let, him, first? let him jizz all over Panzer Dragoon real quick. and then we Oh, can... do I not get to, Do I only get to talk about Panzer Dragoon or I get to talk about other stuff I can play? You can I talk mean, about whatever. You can blow your start load whenever Panzer you want. Okay. Yeah, okay, so uh, uh, number one thing, I beat Xenoblade Chronicles uh, to the prequel story, Torn of the Golden Country. I beat that on Monday. Um, and it was satisfactory. It was very fun. It was very fine. Uh, one of the things I haven't talked about it was <clears throat> that it's very much like, and it, it did a thing in that Xenoma Chronicles X did. I was like, Oh God, am I going to hate this? Uh, and that is, it requires you to do a lot of side quests to advance the main plot. And for some people, that's the stopping point. Like, Nope, I don't want to do that. It requires finding items and, or like talking to people. I don't want to do that. I just want to progress the story. Uh, and I actually like it in this one because the quests weren't really that hard. The areas, unlike t- uh, the main campaign where you have like six different islands to explore and they're all massive, in this one you only have two. And they're not that big. Um, they're pretty reasonable to, to, to go off of. Uh, but what it does is it builds a sense of community. It's basically Majora's Mask where you go around solving people's problems. So like basically the capital of Torna gets attacked by Malos, the bad guy. And they're like, well, we need to raise up the Tornans people's spirits so you go around and helping them out and after you build up to your community to level four uh you the max level i think is after is five i think it's technically six um that's doing all the side quests for everybody or, or talking to specific people uh the heartbreaking part is and if you haven't played xenoblade chronicles 2 you may want to uh blurt me out and only say this is because the hype for one is beginning so i know People who may have skipped out on 2 when it initially came out may not want to hear this. So just bear in mind, this is spoilers. So we know, and when you play the the second game, you know the fate of Torna. Torna is gone. You you saw it destroyed in flashbacks. You know it ended badly. Uh, And I forgot about that. Uh, So you basically fight the final battle. And it's actually cool because it's like two Gundams fighting each other above like a, a giant leviathan monster that s- supports the city it's awesome um one of the great things about it though is like sad things is like i realized once the battle started going crazy um you see the people like basically that you help just get wiped out like laser beams just through the town and through the continent it's just it's just bad uh and there's a horrible point where you see the two these two kids who you were palling around with you and you see them get hit directly with like a blast or like they get in the, they get a part of the blast radius. So that's already bad. And one of the big things I had about it was like, well, why does Mithra, the blonde one become Pyra? Why is she different? Like what happened? And it's possibly one of the most saddest things I've seen in a, in a video game. Uh, she's horrified at what she's done of her power. Like she's, tr- she's, she's gone. So, uh, along the journey, like I said, you have these two boys, Milton and Mikhail. Mikhail is like a war refugee from another another continent, and Mikhail has been partnering with Mithra for some time. And there's like cute moments, like of them like going at each other, 
uh, throughout the story. It's very adorable. You get to know these people within the short limited amount of time. And so she sees uh, Mikhail holding Milton's dead body. Like, and he's just, his eyes are just like those lifeless eyes. Like, I, I, I'm like, I'm not, de- I'm dead, but I'm alive. You know what I mean? You've seen those eyes um, in, in, in like cartoons and like movies, you know, like that kind of look. And she goes to like approach him and, and uh, Mikhail pulls him away. And it, it just, her, you could see the moment where she breaks, like she just loses it. Uh, and so like, to me, I was like. The reason why, and a, a lot of it is to do with the fact that her, like, when she starts out in the in this game, she's very cold. She's like, oh, humans, uh, this, you know, we're, like, kind of racist in a way. But you see her sort of warm up throughout the game through doing story, like, side quests and stuff like that. You see her warm up. So, like, to me, I interpret that a whole scene is that, like, she comes to term with it that she actually cares about people that are not that about care about humans and it's not explicitly said but i took it as pyra is a physical manifestation of her growth and that's why she's in that form when she's found it at the first game and actually leads right into when rex finds her at the bottom of the ship so you see where her body goes you see you see everything you and you're reminded of uh Jin, who's one of the main antagonists in the main game like how tragic his fucking story is and how bad it is and it's it's sad that's all i'm saying it's 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 real sad for for that game but it's a damn good expansion it's not too long and it's not overtly big like the main game is so i loved it it was great um if, if you played two and you haven't played Torning yet like i put it off for so long t- fire it up before uh, one definitive edition comes out because you're gonna love it probably. Because if you play two, you know how what you know do not torn ends. Um, a new Mortal Kombat league started, and I finally got to take my Shao Kahn online, and it it got rough at points. I was getting bodied pretty hard. Uh, Shao Kahn has a lot of problems against people when he when he has to be kept away. The one annoying thing that I hate, I've discovered that I hate so much in this game, is Scorpion Spear. And you would think, like, okay, it goes in a line. Maybe you can jump over it. No, that motherfucking thing tracks. So every, so Shao Kahn has, like, a lunging hammer move that he can do. That most, he can go over most projectiles when time right. But for some reason, Scorpion Spear isn't treated as a projectile. And, like, the second you jump and launch that spear, oh, it's coming right to you. Even if you're, like, five feet above the ground. It's stupid. I hate Scorpion mains. You can all die. Um, I'm not doing so hot in this combat league, but I'm determined to stick it out with Shao Kahn because when I do get to do my combos, ooh, the crunchiness of that bone feels so, so good. Uh, I do not publicly condemn bone crunching. Uh, more updates later. Uh, then, uh, and I hate that I bought this game. Not that I don't hate it, but I hate that it came out this week because it required me to spend extra money. Because of another game that came out this we talked about earlier. But I bought Starlink Battle for Atlantis. Uh, mm. Or at, whatever. Starlink something, yada, yada, yada. I already the, forgot about that. I think you're right. Yeah. And I'm not going to lie. It's really cool. Like, from a visual standpoint. Like, I love how big it is. Um, and I love that you get to... I'm playing a Star Fox. Like, that's, like, you get to choose from a number of pilots. Um... Yeah, why wouldn't you? Yeah, like, I don't care about these other douche nozzles. I care about Star Fox. And I love that Star Fox isn't, like, a shoe. One of them is, I think one of them is, like, an Instagram vlog. Yeah, he has, like, a phone around him. I'm like, fuck, fuck these people. (laughs) He's like, fuck these guys. Star Fox is here. Yeah, Star Fox is here. And, and, like, I love that Star Fox is, like, integrated into the plot. He's not, like, like, he's there for his own reasons. He's there to find Star Wolf. But he's like, well, since I'm here, I'll help you out. And he's, he talks to the other people. Like, he's part of it. And that's cool. Um, he doesn't feel like an add-on. He feels he fits naturally into it. Um, the only thing that bothers me, and it's, I think it's only because I'm playing a Star Fox, is that there's no locking targeting system on this game. Uh, and I'm so used to playing Star Fox where you like you know you target them, you can shoot you can shoot lasers that way. You can still charge lasers and get that effect, but there's no target system. But I won't lie, dog fighting dog fighting in space is really really cool. It's possibly my favorite 
version of dogfighting in space yet because it just feels so dynamic. Uh, and I don't know. Like, I don't, I think this, I haven't played too much of it, but I think playing this game like for hours would be bad because it's a lot of it is repetitive. And I can tell very on you're, you're going to scan some things. You're going to go root an enemy outpost, but I think an hour or two a day, you do a side quest, you'll be fine. Uh, vis- there's something so cool about going into hyperdrive and then as you see coming to a planet and then my favorite so far is launching into from a planet to outer space that is so cool to me uh and the fact that it how it run how, I, I lost my words there how it runs well on switch is really good to me it's really good um it does lose a lot of resolution uh resolution go down significantly when you're playing in dot in handheld mode but like on the tv it looks amazing um, uh, but I wish I didn't buy that game. I wish I would have held off on it. But then again, considering how short the how short this other game is, maybe I'm not. Uh, Panzer Dragoon fucking shadow dropped out of fucking nowhere on, and which we'll talk about more later on. But yeah, just just like it's out. Uh, cause, and I remember watching the direct on my way home. Uh, and I'm like, oh, Panzer Dragoon news. They're gonna give a release date. It's probably gonna be like next month or something. And then I see the date like March 26, and like. I had that cosmic brain energy happen, and I'm like, oh shit, that's today. Um, cosmic brain energy. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I downloaded it, and I was instantly reminded, oh right, this game is super short. Oh no. <laughs> um, it's only I haven't beaten it yet because I'm savoring my time. Uh, it definitely feels like Panzer Dragoon. Um, visually, I think it looks fine. Uh, there's some issues with the controls a little bit. You do have a choice between uh, switching between classic and modern. I still with classic, even though it's been like 20 plus years since I've played this game. Uh, but I still stuck with it and it felt natural. Uh, the one thing that threw me off though, and I'll tell this to anybody who's buying it for the first time, uh, considering this is the first time you can actually play and buy the first uh, uh, Panzer Dragoon game, because unless you want to drop $1,500 on a physical copy and a second saturn which is probably not cheap either um or something like that it's stupid the first one is stupid expensive and i had one i had panzer oh my god i hate mom i hate you uh for burning that game i really hate you for that and my sega saturn i really hate you for that anyways family grievances aside uh the one thing you have to get used to is turning with the shoulder buttons unlike Star Fox, where it's pretty much just go straight pew 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 uh you have to turn three like use the shoulder buttons to turn around to to attack enemies and i think that's so uh it it, it took me a while to get back into that um otherwise and you will get hit from behind and not realize what's hitting you but for like boss fights it's super cool to like change that camera again it's definitely of its time it's definitely if you're a Panzer Dragoon fan like me, you're going to love it. I think you're going to love it. If you're not, and you're not into the whole arcade element, because, like, then you may not like it. And, again, it's also super short. It's only, like, two hours, maybe an hour and a half, two hours, not including continues. Yes, this has a live system. Um, it does save after every episode, but if you die, you have to replay the episode. Uh, but so far, I, I enjoy it. Like, it just it just feels cool to be able to play this game again. Oh, excuse me. Um, and uh, soon, I think they're going to come out with a patch that'll let you play a remix version of the Saturn music, which I think is super dope. Uh, and then they're going to add in gyro motion aiming uh, at some point down the road, which is cool. Um, for free. It's all a free update. So I'm very happy with it so far uh, as a Panzer Dragoon fan. Uh, I wish they said winter. It's past winter. So it's only a few days. So I'm not salty. I'm not. I'm just glad it's here. I just hate that there's a limited run thing going on right now. And I've never wanted to double dip so damn hard in my fucking life. Um, but we'll see how that goes. I'm, I'm just, I'm happy it exists. That's all I've played. That's all I've played. I don't, I don't need a jizz over Panzer Dragoon. I'll do that later tonight when I play the campaign like five <clears throat> more times. Wow. Yeah. Justin. Yeah. So despite being home all week i actually haven't played that much um i haven't had a lot of time we've been doing like some housework and stuff um but i've mostly played animal crossing ironically um it's a lot easier to pull weeds and like dig up holes and stuff in that game than it is in real life i've learned 
Um, I'll be just like going about my village and then I'll go outside and I'm like, Ugh. for some reason I want to go back to playing Animal Crossing. <laughs> um, so it's just like chores all around. But video games are just yeah, easier. Um, but yeah, that, video games are fake. They don't match real life. Fake news. Um, but that's still a real good game. Um, I'm done like with my time traveling and stuff. I just kind of wanted to do that through like the weekend, um, and uh, when I had like a four day weekend that I could just kind of clear out all of like the the slow progression stuff. Um, and now that most of the things are open in my day, uh, I've actually found like like not having enough time to get everything done in the hour or so I have to play each day. Um, so that's kind of weird, but. You know, I do my dailies. Um, there is some cool stuff in this game, like the uh, the ability to move things around, and like every time you want a new villager to come in, you have to actually like put in a like a plot of land for them, uh, which is kind of garbage because you have to pay like ten thousand dollars to put a new like house up essentially, um, and then like Tom Nook brings someone new into town. So, like, I don't understand why me, just a random resident of the town, has to front the cost of expanding this island for, you know, Nook the Crook. But, sure. He is not a crook. Uh, he kind of is in this case. He doesn't ask you for interest. He doesn't give you a due yeah, date. but this isn't for me. Like, he's great on, on like, <laughs> the home the loan front and all that. But why do I have to pay the bill? Do you want friends or not? Yeah. I'm just saying. It's his island. <laughs> he bribed me to come here with just a tent to my name. And now, as I've built this community from the ground up, he gave you an he's like, hey dog, tent. you owe me $10,000 to bring your friends in. Like, that's kind of sleazy. Nah. It's a little bit. Nah. Plus, it's super expensive like to put ramps and stuff in. So, like... I'm trying to get my house bigger because that's the main thing I care about is having all the rooms so I can like customize each one. I want like a theater see, room see and Thomas, all kinds of stuff. Even in the virtual world, he wants a fucking house. It's true. Big yeah. house. I want my basement <laughs> completed in one place at least. I've been in quarantine. I don't, I'm not going to give him any gruff about that because in video games, that's the only place I can own a house. So. Yeah. It was the same for me until this one. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, life imitates art, I guess. Or art imitates life. I don't remember which one it is. Um, but, like, I've been in quarantine, so my father-in-law can't come down and help us finish the basement. So I gotta finish a basement somewhere. Mm -hmm. I want my my theater space. I have a projector ready and everything. In Animal Crossing, I mean. Um, anyway. So, like, I'm trying to put all my money into paying off my home loan. But then there's, like, ridiculous, like, exorbitant costs to just, like build a ramp or a bridge or whatever and of course it's on me to front that too because like the whole village will benefit from it but they drop like a hundred bells a day as a community so i have to spend like you know ninety eight thousand or whatever it costs on my own and then they just trot across the bridge without a care in the world like oh thanks sir screw you fuchsia leave you should put a tool on the bridge right <laughs> um but yeah it's it's a good game it's just i don't know like i understood it in new leaf that everything fell on you because you're the mayor in this game you're just a resident like well, mike asks isn't the island rep the new mayor no no isabel no. and nook tom nook are in residential services there is no mayor because there's no do government on this isolated desolate island that i'm so it's an unincorporated island yeah that i am helping to there's no build law and bring all these people in and then nook's like hey i haven't got enough money from you yet dog you gotta you gotta pay to bring more people here and i can't even get rid of the ones i don't like <laughs> like you'd think if i'm paying this much i could be like hey kick this one out you should be able to pay to get exactly leave. I can go to Isabel and complain about, like, their wardrobe and the way they talk. But I can't just kick them out. Be like, I own this island. I've paid for everything on it. I want Fuchsia gone. 
Is that an elephant? No, it's a deer. It's a llama. Oh, is it a deer? If it was a llama, I'd be fine. Okay. But it's a weird pink deer. I hate it. Uh, yeah, I thought it was a pink no. llama for some reason. The only llamas are the retail a blue one, isn't there? Then I don't, I don't know if retail's in this game. It's a store, but like that was basically cool. where you can like purchase like customized furniture and stuff. And in this one, they built that into the crafting system, so I doubt they exist. I don't know for mm-hmm. sure. I haven't gotten everything. They could be, be visitors. Never Maybe. Um, I, I would like a lot of my visitors. But no, I'm still... My goal right now is um, to get a hamster visitor. Or a hamster villager. Because I have a hamster cage item. Like, with a hamster and a wheel. That's, like, in the cage. That's mean. So I want to give up, the just, hamster... That's so mean. I want to give the hamster villager my hamster cage as a gift. And see them put it in their house. <laughs> so a, a, an anthropomorphic hamster... Has a pet hamster. Is I want him to I, like I want to I want a comic of that where he look you give him the thing and he looks at you and he just says, "Am I a joke <laughs> to you?" And just he just leaves after it gets. Well, I did day. see someone on Twitter post like they gave uh, their cat villager a uh, litter box, and they got really oh, excited. <laughs> so I want to do that with a hamster so I can get a capture of it. But anyway, um, that's how you make them. Yeah, move. exactly. No, the hamsters are cute. <laughs> I love all the hamster villagers. I want my whole village to be full of uh, cats, hamsters, and penguins. Um, Can they do villagers decide when the fuck they want to leave, or do you? Or I think like... you just like ignore them and like be mean to them and stuff, and they eventually just decide to leave. But Fuchsia was my starter one, and I can't get rid of her, so I don't know. Um, but I have Eugene now. He was my newest one, and he is a cool koala, and I love him. He is my favorite, so he can stay. But the rest will all be cats, hamsters, and penguins. Um, Isn't there a weird way that you can make it so that peop- like villagers from other places move into your village? Uh, there's like islands you can visit that like you use like your nook miles to travel to these random islands. And some of these islands have different animals on them. And when you talk to them on those islands, you can like convince them to come stay at your village if you have somewhere for them to stay. Um, yeah, yeah. But you can't just like go to someone's island and scalp their villagers. <laughs> I wish you could because I would. I remember doing that before, like with my ex. Like she had like this really cute villager that mm-hmm. she really liked, and then I just visited her one time, talked to him once, left, and he moved into my. Village. I mean, maybe you can. Like I have gone to other people's <laughs> villages, and like they'll ask about me. But yeah. I don't think you can do that. I don't know for sure. Um. By the way, I just uh, I just got the game just now. Oh, you did? So I'm looking forward to nice. checking it out. Yeah, good. Join us. <sighs> My brother just got it too. He's like, if I'm going to be in quarantine, I might as well get lost in Animal Crossing. <laughs> if I didn't yeah. have like a bajillion fighting games to play, I th- it's so good. I I tried with New Leaf and it it, it did. I didn't hate it, but I was like, this isn't for this me. This one has a lot more and stuff. Like I couldn't get into New Leaf. That's what I'm seeing. I'm like I'm like I'm like jealous. Yeah. But I feel like I wouldn't give it the tension because wouldn't. I need to hit, I need I need to hit combos. But like that's why okay. I did all the time traveling because like there it's a dense opening where it's like you start with nothing, like you were like they have to teach you how to craft and stuff and all of this and it's like each day there's a kind of a new tutorial, so like I wanted to do a bunch of time traveling for the first week or so just to clear out all that stuff so that like when I actually want to jump in daily and play I can just do what I want. And not have to worry about like each thing unlocking each day. You know what I mean? Um, so like, it have takes a while. It, have you done any of the multiplayer yeah, stuff? Yeah, I've, I've been to some towns and stuff. So what's it like? It's cool. It's slow. Like it's The weirdest part of the game to me is the multiplayer. It's also the best part. But like you either open your gate. Uh, there's these awesome dodos that run the airline. Um, you open your gate and like people can come and go as they please. Uh, but like each time someone comes over... It goes to this, like, kind of loading screen for you. So they see, like, basically the plane kind of, you know, crossing over the island and then landing. Um, Mm -hmm. So they can kind of get a quick view of, like, what you've got going on. Um, But all you see is just, like, it goes to a screen that's, like, this person is visiting from this island. And then it's, like, like a stoplight ticker. And then they come off the airline and you're good. So it, like, freezes everything when someone comes to visit you. And, like, I had one issue a few days ago where I had opened my island for a few friends to come over. And, like, we were hanging out, you know, doing our Animal Crossing thing. And, like, it's super fun. Like, if you make them your best friends, they can do literally anything you can do on the island. 
um, except access some of the stuff at resident services. Um, but like, you know, they can, they can dig up fossils. They can shake your trees all the, like, you know, they can go to the shop and buy stuff like all of that. Um, you also can't customize your house when people are there weirdly. Um, mm-hmm. but it's, it's fairly like unlimited as far as what people can do. Uh, but they left and I was going to close my gate and someone else came over. So I was like, okay, whatever, you know, that's fine. Like another visitor, it's not a big deal. I'll, you know, hang out with them when they leave, I'll close it. So they're getting ready to leave. Someone else shows up. So like it keeps freezing the game essentially when someone shows up and then when someone leaves, it does the same thing. So it's like, I kept having this like overlap of someone new coming and then maybe a minute later, the last person leaving. And then hanging out with the new person. And then, you know, right before they leave, someone else shows up. And so it's just like, it just stalls everything. Uh, um, and like, you can so close don't the leave, gate. So don't leave it open to, to the public then. Right. That's what I'm hearing. Like, you can either set like a dodo code that you give to people if you want them to visit. Um, or you can open it to only best friends and then be very choosy about who your best friends are. Uh, because I have a few people that like, they'll ask if they can visit. So we'll open the gates, you know, they can come over, we do our thing, whatever. But there's a lot of people that play that just open it, like while they're streaming or something. And I can't imagine that being enjoyable. Because like, if you get eight people in there, all coming and going at will, like, nobody would have fun with that. Because there's just constant loading screens for everyone except the one person flying in. So it's kind of weird, like a lot of people complained about their netcode and stuff. Um, but they're not going to do anything about it because it's Nintendo. Right. Uh, but like once you get people <laughs> on your island, it's super fun. Um, so it's, you know, it's a necessary evil and it's arguably the best the internet, the online support has been, but that's not saying much. Yeah. Um, and I don't know how local works. I, that might be better, but I know online is, is a pretty long wait, but we'll test it out. You need Thomas. You can see, um, whatever you get up and running because it takes a day or so for the uh, multiplayer to unlock um mm. but i'm really enjoying it like uh like i like i said before i couldn't really get into new leaf um i wanted to i played it for you know off and on for a while but i just never really got that invested in like making my village cool or whatever i don't even really remember the game that well but like i had a hard time getting into a lot of things on the 3ds just because of the system itself it's kind of low res, like the battery didn't last very long. It's just, I don't know. Like, I loved games on the 3DS, but I hated playing the 3DS. Um, and so, like, this being on the Switch, I just have a lot more incentive to get into it. And, like, I'll load it up for an hour, you know, do my stuff, uh, save and quit, and then jump into something else. Like, it's just a nice, like, distraction, uh, you know, a few times a day. Check it in the morning, grab your, like, your morning bugs and stuff check it at night you know get killed by a tarantula over and over again like it's cool why are there tarantulas in this fucking game they're they're yeah inf- infinite tarantula island i record. hate them they're terrible i have yet to catch one i don't understand it <laughs> were they always a thing i don't Animal think Crossing? so they're evil though that's that's yeah i've seen them chase you like what the yeah f- why? it's terrifying it turns it into a straight up horror game and i hate it this sounds like fun to me. Because um, also, like, <laughs> sometimes when you shake a tree, a spider will come down from a web on it. Yeah, oh, but, like, that's that. easy. You just, like, you know, you snag it with your net. But the tarantulas, yeah. you can't even see them because they only come out at night. I hate it. <laughs> um, anyway. Where's my shotgun at? Let me go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, craft a shotgun. Rip and tear till it's uh, done. <laughs> but aside from that, I played a little bit of Division 2 with Thomas and Sully. Uh, that was that was Yay, still super fun. Rebellion. Um, I like it more than I did the first time we played because I'm opening up more of the abilities and stuff. Uh, like you said, the loot is kind of lame. Like it's just variations of the same thing, and I get kind of confused about like what's better than others because I don't really understand like the stat screens. Yeah, it's not good. no. Um, the UI is clunky in general. Like I don't even know where like your uh, your skill recharges are. Um, but like the grind is good. Like it's a satisfying, uh, mission structure. It's a fun game to play. Yeah. Yeah. And like, I really like the, the squad stuff. I think the reason I liked it more is because there was three of us. 
So like it felt more like a full squad, you know, it was kind of fun. Mm -hmm. Um, And the missions we did were really cool. Like I like the locations you go to, you know, the air and space museum was awesome. Yeah. That was fantastic. I love that mission. Just like in a firefight and the around the Mars Rover. Like that's so cool. Yeah. It was pretty sweet. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> and stupidly stealing the Declaration of Independence was ridiculous, but yeah, that that fun. was a side mission. <laughs> yeah, like there's just there's a charm to that game. Yeah. Um, but uh, the only other thing I need to get more into it. Uh, but I did about an hour of the Bradley Default Two demo, uh, which we'll get into more later with the the Nintendo Direct news. But it looks so pretty. Yeah, I mean that is like. That Bravely Default's another one that, like, I loved on 3DS, but I, like, I didn't mind playing on 3DS because, like, it kind of, it made use of the depth in a nice way, and it just looked good. Um, yeah. But I fell off of it pretty quick. Like, I got about probably halfway through the game, and it, just, it started to feel a little repetitive. Oh, it, yeah. It, no, there's a point where you do yeah. the same thing. I heard, like, like the last third of the game is just awful. Um, yeah, it's not. But the ending is kind of worth. Sorry, no, you're fine. Um, so but, cool. Like barely second, I kind of forgot about. Um, that's also. And really I feel like good. it's more of the same, right? Like, uh, not the second half is not nearly as bad. It's much more interesting in how it okay. keeps you in check. Um, although how you <laughs> how you get to like the actual true second is a lot more like wait what. I had to look. I had to look it up online because it's. It, otherwise, you do fall in the trap. Of like, wait a minute, I'm doing this stuff all over again. There's got to be a trick, and there mm. is a trick. I won't say what the trick is, but it's okay. a cool one. Because like, but by, by that point, I just you know I never beat the first one, so I didn't care to go to the second one. Um, yeah, they're both they're duology. Yeah. Yeah. But like, it's weird to me that for one that this one's called Brave Default Two, because like we had a Brave yeah. Default sequel. But are yeah. they just ignoring that, or is it like Final Fantasy numbering? I, where this is technically the third. I think game, it might be but... Final Fantasy. Yeah, because like this one doesn't. At least so far, it doesn't seem to have anything to do with the first right. two games. So that would versus, be like like Final uh, Fantasy Ten and Ten Two, like Bravely Default and Bravely yeah. Second, and then this is like Final yeah. Fantasy Eleven, essentially. Pretty much, where it's like totally yeah. unrelated, but like is the next numbered entry. I hope there are references, though. Yeah, there could be. Because this is it's technically the same world, it's just a different continent. Right. Um, because like the first one was looking. Yeah, it's it is a very pretty game. Uh, I love that art style in HD. Like it's incredible. Um, it's a little jarring though sometimes because I feel like they blended all that better in the 3DS, and it could have just been system limitations. But like it all kind of had that like like 2.5D like painterly style, uh, like even down to combat. And this one, it kind of blends like, uh, like the kind of the f- flat dimensional, like it's it's flat in multiple dimensions, if that makes sense, like papercraft almost, um, like kind of city view, which is beautiful. Don't get me wrong, with three D character models, and then the world map is like a two point five D kind of overview, still somewhat like artsy. But like more 3D, and then battles yeah. are just 3D, like everything 3D. And uh, my one of my friends said that it, like, it, it's kind of like the PS1 era of Final Fantasy games, which I thought was perfect description, because like, oh, it's gonna storm. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know if you heard that, but it was crazy thunder. Mm-hmm. Um, nope, didn't hear it. But, uh. The, you know, the PS1 games, like, they were system limitations. So it was static backgrounds, because they looked the best, and then 3D battles, and then kind of the, like, simpler polygonal, like, overworld. This is kind of like that, except it's more like a design choice. So, like, it specifically looks different in those different ways, but it's also a little jarring when you compare it to the 3DS that had a more similar visual style. Um, I like this more. Like, I'm a big fan of this art style. But I kind of wish they would have gone like full Octopath Traveler with it, where it's just all that kind of, you know, like flat painterly art style with 3D characters. Because um, I thought the the like 2.5D sprite art of Octopath Traveler was a little weird looking. I liked it, but it was like high def sprites and it took me out of it a little bit because you could tell they were actually 3D. Um, 
Whereas this, I feel like they they should just do like 2D backgrounds with depth. Because that kind of simulates that 3DS, like, you know, depth slider look with just the 3D character, like high def 3D character models. And I think if they did the whole game like that, it would look better. But that said, it's a great game. Um, so far, at least. I do wish that the demo gave you a little bit more of the, the riskier um, jobs to play around with. Because it's pretty much just like the freelancer, uh, black mage, white mage, monk, vanguard. Uh, there's one other. That's a new one. What's well, knight, essentially. Oh, yeah. okay, never mind. Um, it's a different a name one. for it, but... It's the defensive class. Um, and I can't remember what the other one is. But, like, it's it's like six pretty basic jobs. You're not getting the chemist job right, right. there. And maybe you Which, get more, by the way, that's a fairly long demo, and I pretty much just, like, I left the, the main city that you start in and did some level grinding outside of it. Because the game is hard, by the... Like, they even warn you at the beginning, they're like, this demo has ramped up the difficulty so that you can get a sense for how the, the combat system works. Um, without, you know, mm. the, the grinding, like, just grinding attack out, basically. Like, they want you to actually, like, make use of the combat, even against, like, you know, regular little enemies. Um, cool. Yeah. And so, like, it's a lot of fun. Uh, but, like, if you don't take advantage of the Brave and Default systems, like, you will die. Um, I almost died against just a random battle, because, like, I wasn't taking it seriously, and they wrecked me with, like, multiple attacks in a row. Um... So, like, I need to get further into it and actually, like, experience what all is in there. Uh, I saw one of my friends beat it, like, a hundred, like the demo, 100%, and, like, even found this he- secret hidden boss that you can fight in it. So, like, apparently there's a lot of content there. Um, but I just didn't have enough time yet. Uh, I mean, they just released it, like, yesterday, I think. Um, so I'm going to check into that more and probably report back next week. But I hope you get some more jobs by the end of the demo, because I want to play around with more stuff. And even the ones you have, you can only level up to, like, level 7. Uh, so... Well, in, even in the main game, I think from at least Bravely Default 1, it, the, only, the highest level is level 9. Right. It's just, it took a stupid long time to get Yeah, I mean, I've already got them all up to, like, level 3 on their jobs. So, like, it doesn't take that long. good. That's level good, because that was four. a huge problem. That wasn't a problem in 2nd. Second made it a lot easier, but one, oh my, the grind was stupid mm-hmm. real, which is why you had to rely on street passes for your other friends to get those right. fucking pet booth And that kind of stuff, boss. I assume, is going to be gone. Um, and yeah. it seems like the side quests so. specifically take on more of a traditional, like, you know, you go to a, a character, they have a side quest for you, you go do the quest, you come back to them. Like, I don't think there's going to be, like, the, you know, the village reproduction or anything like that i think it's just gonna be like more that stuff. Was, yeah i mean like that was kind of like a whatever it was a 3ds it gimmick. was neat yeah it was neat but like yeah the i didn't even bother with it in the second one where you're like rebuild the moon yeah i i heard about because i like i was reading up in the second one because i was like did i miss anything like should i go back and play this on emulator or something and no. no, I mean, I think narratively wise, they do really interesting things. And in the first game, without spoilers, they do like it's one of the few games that literally like you're playing a game at like eleven o'clock at night, and like you learn revelation, and like you get a chill down. I got a chill down my spine because I learned what mm-hmm. happened. I'm like, who's? Because I feel like who the fuck is watching me <laughs> right now? Like it just felt like that. Like I don't want to give it away because it's a huge like reveal. Um, like, I kind of want to really check hope- it out, like, on an emulator, because I can up the resolution and see, like, how it, you know, basically compare it to Bravely Default 2. Um, yeah. See, like, the HD version of that 3DS game. But uh, I also don't really care. It's a it's a slog. Yeah. Like, um, there is a point where, like, you, because basically what happens is you have to destroy the four crystals. The game literally, and this is on purpose, makes you do that and repeat events I think at least three or four times mm. before it actually you just dis- before you discover why that's happening, and that makes me think it's like you know they only had so much memory on the 3ds, so they were padding the length, yeah, by like having you re- redo well, areas so that they could kind of you know get more out of that space that they put on the yeah. cartridge. The Switch would there, have there, that there's some there's some things that do you do like certain like. The characters start referencing, like, wait a minute, we've done this already. What's mm-hmm. going on? And it does start to, like, unravel. And it, but it's like, 
Yeah, I don't I don't blame anybody who didn't want to do that yeah. again. Like that's the only reason why I I don't want to like I thought about it, like starting it up again and I realized, oh. Oh no. I just like oh. I played it a lot at work like on lunch breaks and stuff cuz this was back when I was at Walmart. Um and so like I think I just never really like kind of checked out on the story and stuff. So by the end of the game I was like I don't really care what's going on anymore. So I just decided to stop yeah, playing. Yeah, no, it gets Whereas this one I think it like it's really still meta. the, you know, just reactivating the crystals and stuff but just being yeah. on the switch i think it's going to interest me more yeah i just i just after knowing what the narrative over end game was in the first in the in the first two games i don't know where the i'm interested to see where they go with mm-hmm. it and like how is it going to tie into the larger narrative is it can like that's what i'm curious about uh because i already re- referenced it's going to be like four crystal yeah. stuff and i do like the new characters so. i think they have fun voice acting I think they're cool. Oh, the cowboy is my favorite. Or the the, the yeah, he's like Ira- He's got a really fun accent. Yeah, he's my. But favorite like, they all sound art. distinctly different. And like, I, I was kind of annoyed by the voice acting at first because it it has that thing where you have to advance the dialogue boxes. Oh, but once yeah, I set yeah. it up to auto advance in the settings, which I recommend doing for the demo, um, it oh, felt definitely. a lot more smooth and like natural the way they spoke. Um, so it's kind of it's dated in a few ways, but it's also like. You know, play the demo. They're trying to get our feedback and stuff from it. So, like, this is supposed to be kind of a classic Final Fantasy game. Like, that's what I've been wanting, you know. I've got a video coming out that I'm hoping to still work on. I've been kind of lazy. Um, about how, like, I don't like the direction of a lot of RPGs now and I want to go back to these classics. This is that classic. So, like, I can't complain too much about that stuff. But there are those things where it's like, if you're going to have voice acting, put voice acting in it. Like, don't you know, make it where you still have to read and advance the box. And like those kind of things feel a little too dated, but I think it's just, it's trying to please the best of all worlds. We'll yeah, see. but it's really cool. I definitely recommend checking out the demo. Um, we've got a few months for the game, so, you know, it's, it's all you got for right now, but yeah. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Um, I want to do, uh, I want to play through both uh, AM2R and uh, Samus Returns again and do kind of a compare contrast of those two um, at some point, but I haven't really gotten into that yet. Um, and I mean, I've, I've played those games before, so I probably wouldn't talk about them anyway, but I could use an excuse to talk about Metroid, so we'll see. It's been I know. a while. I mean, it, not really. It was like two months ago I did that Metroid Fusion sequel video. Well, I'm just talking about I'm just playing a Metroid oh, yeah. game. Well, again, I I played <laughs> Fusion for that video, so there's that. But I didn't really talk about it when I was playing it. It's been a while. Are there really only four hairstyles in Animal Crossing? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's why I don't. I kind of don't want to play Animal Crossing because I see all the creative shit. It's the same thing with Mario Maker. I see all of it and I get stumped. I get I get intimidated by. But it you can download much. people's designs, so you can cheat. Yeah, but I feel like I see. For me, I'm like I want it to be mine, and I feel like I'm cheating when I do it. I know that's stupid. Eh. It's stupid, but I'm like, I because I've seen a I've seen a Street Fighter Two, uh, World Warrior One with the character select skin. That's dope, and I want that. But I'm like, how did you make <laughs> that? That's cool. Uh, Thomas, to answer your question, you start out with a few hairstyles, but you can buy more like style packs in the the Nook shop. Okay. And you can change your look um, at any time in a mirror, so. That's great. Yeah. Ooh, wish it was that easy in real life. I know, right? Just look at a mirror and all of a sudden you're white, now you're privileged. It's the man Jeez. in the mirror. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, Alright, so uh, I've been playing Resident Evil 3 demo. Mm. <gasps> yeah, that game that. is dope. It's really good. Uh, it's just, it looks- it's just like the second uh, Resident Evil 2. Um... Ben, you were just gonna say it looks really good, right? No, I was gonna say, I was gonna ask you how's the how's the uh, the dodge mechanic? How do you like that? That that wasn't in RE two. The dodge mechanic. I'm just gonna say it's very limited. Oh, okay. It sucks. Uh, I hate it. Do you have to use it? Uh, no. It's 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 very helpful. Uh, I saw Max streaming it, and somebody said told him. Uh, it's just like Bloodborne, and it's like it clicked, and he just starts doing it like constantly. It's great. <laughs> it's so it's so garbage, I think, though, because like when you use it once, you you're like kind of like stun locked for a second, and you can't move after you dodge. So if you like, 
So instead of running away and you try and like dodge his attacks, if you don't dodge correctly, you're stuck there and you can't just run out of the way of his attacks. And... Yeah, you kind of have to turn slowly and then sh- shoot. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I don't like it at all. Uh, I think if you're able to run after you dodge or like limit the stun lock on it, it'd be a lot better. Um, but yeah, it's really good. It's just like, uh, it's just like Resident Evil 2, same kind of graphics, same kind of gameplay style. Um, I think they improved on the inventory slots though, because they make, they make the shotgun only one slot instead of two. Oh, that's good. So it might be a bit helpful for inventory management in this game when you go further. Especially considering you have to fight that big bitch multiple times. Yeah, I just run away from him. I don't really shoot him. Um... And, and so, like, at the end of the... It's really short demo, too. It's, like, maybe less than an hour. Like, 40 minutes. But I didn't realize that. So I kind of, like, just tried to do everything I could I could think of. Um, and then I spent, like, half like half that game just running around trying to open this, this uh, safe while he was chasing me. And I was like, god damn it. <laughs> um, apparently that demo's bigger than I... Th- thought it was though because there's like a lot of collectibles that you can get by shooting and there's like some there was a lock on these doors that i kept trying to shoot with like a shotgun or something or using different items on it and i couldn't couldn't open them but uh i assume there's a bunch of collectibles that you can get in that demo um that there's like an item somewhere that you can use on those locks so i don't know it's pretty fun uh i didn't realize that jill was in resident evil 3 i always thought it was a different character so when I what? remember it was Jill, I was like, oh, that's interesting. Never knew that was Jill. That like that's Jill what? looks really different. Isn't she the main character? Yeah, she's the main she's character. The main character three, yeah. in one Even I know that. And one and That's like one of her most iconic outfits is the blue holster top. Five. There's like so many different like main characters in the series though. It's no it's it's just it's well it's it's really just Chris, Jill, and Leon. That's really who it is. And Claire. And Claire. Claire is. Claire is like she's. She's a B plus. And player. then Barry. Uh, and then. Bar- ba- Barry. Really? You didn't tell me Barry is a star. No, he's like. He's I'm like talking C. about all the games, man. Like, there's so many he's different not, protagonists that you play as in these games. He's not a protag. He's your partner who's gonna die. He's he doesn't dumb. die though. Claire, he doesn't die though. <laughs> no, he should die though. No. Um, Claire, I'll give you. Okay, okay. It's Chris, Claire, Leon, and Jill. Those are your four main pro tags in the Resident Evil games. That's it. I'm including Revelations, Anybody else? by the way. So, um, some of those kids don't matter. They because they never appear anywhere else. But those like, kids you're not are gonna good. say. No, they are good. Don't get me wrong. I love uh, Revelations one at least. But the like the Russian dude or or Chris's partner in you never see them again. They're there for that game. That game only. It's Chris, Claire. Jill and Leon. That's all who matters. I'm just saying I didn't know I didn't I don't know anything about three. Like, I'm um, also Alice. <laughs> what the fuck is that? Oh no. Oh, you know. Oh. Alice from the movies. No. Oh <laughs> right. <laughs> I totally forgot about her. Yeah. I get it. Even though she has like what, nine movies or something? Something like that. Oh, I've been waiting God, for the, the last one to be on streaming because I've never seen it. But it's it's bad. I know I see all they're all bad. But I've watched all the others, so I feel like I have to at this point. You know why? Though I've only ever seen the first one. Oh. Yeah, a few I of the later ones are actually pretty okay. That's what you keep telling me. Yeah, I saw the second one. I was like, nope, this is stupid. Like, I hate. I, it. Like, I think it's four and five. I I vaguely enjoyed. Uh, was, what is that? Apocalypse with uh, Chris in it. And there's one that has like Chris, Jill, Leon, and Claire, I think. Yeah, I think that's But they're all basically jobbers to fucking. I think that's house. Apocalypse. <laughs> that's the like my favorite, at least. Wesker's a bad guy in one of them. Wesker's in a lot of them. Supposed to be pretty... Is he? Wesker's he's the bad dumb guy. though. Like he's not a good character. He wasn't the bad guy in the first movie. Yeah. I don't remember which one's which now. Well Wesker's stupid comic in the game. Look at RE5. He's stupid comical in that one. Fair. Uh, he's basically the, in the Matrix in that one. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, actually, in, in Code Veronica, that's that's how you learn like how he's able to do that because he because di- how he dies in RE One. Is Veronica some... the lead in Code Veronica? 
No, Claris. Okay. Uh, Extinction. I don't know. Extinction is the fifth one. Okay. okay. And it's not bad. Yeah. I, I don't believe you. It's not. Okay. Um. So yeah, that's about it. That's all the kind of the new stuff I've been playing. Uh. I watched Frozen 2, and that was a terrible movie. What? <laughs> uh, I haven't seen it. It's better than the Don't first bother. one. I've seen it. Don't bother. It's not. It's not interesting. Me. I have the Disney. I have Disney Plus. I, I will bother because I love the first one. It's better than the first one. It's more mature. It's. It's really bad. Whatever. It's not inter- entertaining I don't, at all. It's my two really white boring. dads are arguing no, about Frozen. I don't know. It's who to not believe. as funny. You're right. But it's more mature and interesting. If you care about the characters. And it's so lame. I do. I do, I do oh. like Ben. Ben, you'll like it. Don't it's listen really to Thomas. Lame. No, it's really lame. You'll so fall asleep. So I listen. Which white dad do I listen to? I don't listen know. to the one listen that actually the owner of the website theater. theater. <laughs> uh, you know what? At karaoke tomorrow, I'm only going to sing Frozen 2 songs. I'm just going to leave. Call my what bluff. What are going to do? I'm an affiliate. Call my you bluff. You guys can't do a party without me. Ah, oh, dang it. <laughs> no, it's true. Daddy, no! You can't pull that oh, card. Wow. <laughs> uh, what else? I also watched um, The Dark Side of Wrestling. Or Dark Side of the Mat. I can't remember what it was. Oh, man. Oh. Have you seen it? I... No, I don't want to, man. It's... I, I, They're really good. I've heard, I've, I've heard it, but I... Dude, Chris Benoit was my favorite growing up. Like, him and Eddie... And knowing what he did, I don't want to feel like that again. Yeah. I I just, like... I didn't know, I know the entire been... story. So, like, I knew what happened, obviously, but I didn't know the entire yeah. story. And, like, it just yeah. made that tragedy way more sadder. Yeah, that's the thing. The world's kind of in a pandemic, and I really don't want to cry. <laughs> I really don't. That's, probably, that's number, one of the reasons why I didn't play Ori this week a lot. Because, like, I really don't want to feel shitty. I just don't. Yeah. Like... Like I get it, it's important, but I'm like, but it's really touching he... at the end, like with um, yeah. David Benoit, and like I get it, but like I just can't, I can't get out. Yeah. When I was 17, hearing what he did, yeah, and I won't say it because it's it's, it's really fucked up. Oh, yeah, it's fucked up, and like I idolized the man growing up. I didn't like, realize him... it took over like a three day span of like what yeah, happened. It was, that dude, was, it was insane. It's messed up. I remember that. Oh God! Yeah, but like also I, I'm have, sure it's good. But also, they have like other episodes like about Bruiser Brody and like again, they're all tragedies. But there's like a silver lining, and they usually end off on a pretty good note. Yeah. Um, dude, I hated Ben. I I hated Benoit after it. Like I fucking. It took me a while to like let the anger go. Mm-hmm. Like when I'm just like I just don't I just don't want to ever hear his name again. Yeah. Yep. Um, but they're really good. I suggest anyone that's into wrestling check those out for sure. I heard Jim Cornette said he cried watching it because of how tragic it is. Corn- yeah. Speaking of wrestling, I watched Hobbs and Shaw, and it's actually surprisingly good. What does that have to do with it's oh the rocks, the rocks in it? In it right? yeah. yeah, yeah. That's all I know about wrestling. Um, <laughs> but no, like it's actually like there's some stupid parts. I mean, it's a Fast and the Furious movie at the end of the day. But totally. like, yeah, with a superhuman yeah, person. Yeah, like there's actually some super good action in it. Like the last, it's the cool. last action, like the last half hour or so is just okay. Like they kind of blow their load early with some of the action scenes. Um, mm-hmm. But like, there's some good stuff in there. Thomas, isn't Roman Reigns in the movie? Yes, he is. Is he? Okay. Yep. Who is he? He's the he's one of the Samoans. Oh, okay. Probably background I gotcha. Guy. He's not a background guy. He's in it more than you think he is. I figured they were all The Rock's family members. Oh, look at Vince McMahon shoving Roman Reigns. I'm sorry. (laughs) I love Roman. I want him to sit on me. Uh, Moving on. Wait, what? Moving on. Let's let's talk about the news. A little bit. No. You'll listen to the audio. It's there. I won't deny it, but I won't repeat it. I will say, though, that I watched Hobbs and Shaw in a 4D theater, and you know this part at the end where it rains? Mm -hmm. I got rained on. Did you get Roman rained on? Yeah. Did he sit on you? Well, it was a 40 theater, so it might have been. It might. Um, yeah. Uh, I also played a little bit of Ori. I finally got to the actual game. Yeah. And so now, uh, at least I have someone to find did all the wisps. What? At least someone played Ori. <laughs> not my fault. The game is audio stutters that take me out of the goddamn game. Yeah, I it's almost didn't. Fault. I almost didn't continue playing because of that, but it cleared up on its own. Dude, for it's me. bad, man. I'm well, sorry. Well, if you got an Xbox. 
That's not that's not my fault. That's not my fucking fault. I don't know. It, I can't Maybe. tell you the fix because it just worked on its own after a while. Yeah, I've tried looking up fixes, but hey, maybe after you, you know, maybe a little more, I'll just wait. I'm just going to patiently wait. I'm not going to bitch. I'm going to patiently wait for a patch. I got other stuff to play. It'll be there. Maybe just play it a little bit it. more and then it'll fix itself like it did for no, me. No, no, I but no, I can't, dude. I for me, can't. I got glitchier I the, deal the further with... I got. I didn't have the audio started, but it did get glitchy. Hmm. I, I can deal with the lower frame. I can deal with that shit, right? Because my PC is not great. I can't with the game like where the music is essential. I cannot. It drives me insane. Like it, it like that opening whole opening segment for me is ruined. And I want to replay it when it gets fixed. I will start from the beginning when it gets fixed. All right, all right. I'll be waiting. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, it's a good game. Uh, moving on to the news. Do 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 do. Claimed. Do 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 Let's talk about the Nintendo Direct Mini. Yeah. I didn't see it, so Justin, tell Let's... everyone about it. Just out of nowhere. Out of fucking Yeah, nowhere. I like I woke up and started doing work. And like I saw Nintendo Direct trending and I was like, wait, what? So I went to YouTube and it was just sitting there. It was like halfway over, so I started at the beginning. But yeah, I was like, what where okay. Like, cool. A lot of people were saying there was gonna be a Nintendo Direct this Thursday, but sure. Um, anyway, we got our new kind of deep dive trailer of the Xenoblade Chronicles, uh, definitive edition. Um, it looks good. It's got that future connected epilogue thing there, which I assume is that new content you were talking about. Mm -hmm. Um, and like, uh, I don't know if I'll play it, but it looks like it looks better than anything Xenoblade Chronicles has looked before to me. Maybe I'm just hard up for RPGs right now, but it definitely seems interesting. Um, but it comes out mm. May 29th, which is pretty soon. Yeah, Memorial Day weekend. Fuck yeah, yeah let's go. You can definitely you can definitely tell that Nintendo's putting some some stock behind this, which is funny because like oh. the original game almost didn't come here. It until like the the what was the Project Rainfall called. Yeah, where we like that was the only one that kind of like made any kind yeah, of Yeah, because it was like the last story, since. and then one other one, right? I can't remember the other one, but like I find it funny that Xenoblade's the only one that's kind of gotten any yeah. prominence. I feel then. like they could remaster the last story and it would do well on Switch too, but they're probably not going to. I I always wanted to buy that for the Wii when I had a Wii U when my Wii U mm. was still plugged in, but I'm like I never did. I heard interesting. I I down like I had like all these emulators and stuff on my Wii when I hacked it. And I played a little bit of it, but I didn't really... It's more of like an action tactical RPG, which is kind of weird. Um, and, I mean, the Wii was a re low resolution. It didn't feel like it belonged there anyway. But, I don't know. Something about it didn't click with me. Mm. But I know a lot of people liked it, so I think it could use a second chance. But they're not going to put the money behind it when it didn't sell well. So, it's, you know, it's a double-edged sword. Um... But yeah, it looks interesting. There's some right. cool stuff there. And the remaster looks incredible. Like, I didn't realize how much better it looks until I saw a side-by-side. -side. And yeah, they did a great job. Um, Anyway, the next part of the Direct is actually kind of a nice little, like, sizzle reel of different 2K games. And, like, kind of a cool, like, 2K Love Switch montage. Um, which was pretty funny. But we've got the Bioshock Collection, uh, the Borderlands Collection, and XCOM 2 all coming to Switch, which is kind of crazy when you think about it. Like, these are not games I would have expected on a Nintendo console. Um, but also, I'm kind of I'm kind of here for it. Like, I probably won't buy any of them because I don't, like, they're not really my types of games anyway. But, like, Borderlands on a Nintendo console is insane <laughs> by itself. Um, yeah, like that's really cool. And it, I don't, I don't, I, you guys know my feelings on the game, but what? I think uh, as a, uh, he says, he, he, well, you could guess what Ben's going to say about Borderlands. He doesn't care, but it's cool. Yeah, that's fair. Um, anyway, I, I hope he's okay. But, uh, next we've got Ultimate Alliance 3. Uh, the Doctor, the Fantastic Four DLC with Doctor Doom, um, also looks good. Like some of the DLC characters have very much felt like 
almost clones. Uh, where it's like you can clearly tell that their animations are, you know, skinned versions of other characters. Uh, these characters, for the most part, look really cool and new. Uh, the thing is kind of generic, but the others all look great. Um, I really like Mr. Fantastic's moves. And apparently, uh, Ben told me that this has an epilogue for the main story. Uh, whereas most of the DLCs have just kind of been like one mode that like, you know, introduces the new characters and gives you a few like challenge towers and stuff. Um, this one actually has like new story content to play through. Um, so we're going to check that out in the near future and I'll report back about that. But yeah, like in a world where Fantastic Four has, is all but dead almost, it seems like it's cool to see them get the, the front and center treatment. Um, Ben, are you back? Do you have comments on Fantastic Four DLC? Uh, I think it's cool that they added, like, it's an actual, like, epilogue. Yeah. Like, like that's cool. I wasn't expecting it to be another gauntlet thing. Um, so, I think that's really fucking neat. Uh, I look forward to tag-teaming with you and bri, bri uh, yeah. and kick Dr. Doom's ass like we kicked Thanos' yeah. ass. Let's double-team Dr. Doom. Spit yeah, I'll be style. the thing. Do some Eiffel Towering. Yeah. Thomas, you need please buy the game at some point. Can you buy so the game for me? Us? It's like a hundred bucks here. Is it? Oh, I'm sorry. It's a full price game, isn't it? I mean, I guess with the DLC. Yeah, yeah it'd be kind of expensive. Yeah. yeah. That's true. I just bought Animal Crossing for forty dollars. I had a fifty dollar <laughs> credit. You you probably had the you made the right choice. How is how did you spend forty dollars if you had a fifty dollar credit? Because it's eighty dollars. That's insane. Yeah, but he gets free healthcare, so that's, that's true. the trade off. You do have that. We're kind of screwed. Yeah, well, me and him are. Probably I gladly die. pay eighty dollars for a game to not have to die from coronavirus, but you know that's yeah, that's neither here nor there. Anyway, and demonetize. Yeah. Uh, next, why do you think? Why do you think I'm going to get that Pornhub uh, deal? Oh yeah, <laughs> see, there you go. Spend that fifty dollars to buy uh, Marvel. And we'll make well, some content out of it. I asked for $100 now because it's porn. So yeah. Porn's more expensive. That's fair. Um, <laughs> if, it doesn't, like, if it doesn't affect who comes to our site, which probably not because what kids are going to listen to this, then it doesn't matter. Like, Who cares who our <laughs> sponsors are? Yeah, too busy watching Ninja throw tantrums like their stepdad does at their real house. Oh! Um, they'd be better I'm off Ninja. watching porn, honestly. Uh, that's, that's too real. I, only... I actually watched porn yeah. to get away from my stepdad's tantrums. Shots fired at Ninja. I'm starting a war, bitch. Let's go. Fight me in Mortal Kombat, asshole. Let's go. He will only fight you in Fortnite. Yeah, true. Because, because that's true coward. gamers. Oh. Uh, Fortnite takes skill, don't you know? Yeah, anyway, nice. next we've got a game I can't really pronounce. Uh, but it's... I can't tell if it's like supposed to be a Metroidvania or not. But it's kind of an interesting like underwater action-adventure type game. Yeah, it looks so neat. It does actually. It kind of reminds me of like Song Song of the Deep, which is why I'm not sure if it's a Metroidvania you know what it or not. Me of? I I called it Steam World Dig, but for underwater. Yeah, kinda. Which again, another Metroidvania. So like, I'm not totally sure. How what much it is, is that on the eShop? I need to look that up because I kind of want to buy 20. it. The first Ugh, one, never or mind. the second one. <laughs> no, I'm talking about uh, the, this one. Oh, this new game. I don't know. I haven't seen it. Uh, I already, Shin I have... Sekai Into the Depths. It looks cool. I don't really get into like underwater games, but this actually like the whole thing is underwater, so surely it plays well. <laughs> it look it looks yeah. fun. Um and then we get an update for uh Animal Crossing, which brings in a terrifying Easter bunny. Um It looks pretty sweet. Or bunny Day. Yeah, Bunny Day. Like it is cool though. Because like right now a lot of people are, you know, stuck at home and can't see their families and stuff. So I guess sad as yeah, it sounds, yeah. this might be our Easter. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Like Easter is coming up soon, like in a couple of weeks, yeah. actually. So, so I mean, it's like it sucks, but it's nice that this is available at least. You know, like it's okay. The world is not destroyed yet. Yeah, like family members could possibly get in together and like play Animal Crossing on Easter if they can't see yeah. each other. Like it's kind of cool. You can't see the Easter Bunny? Well, uh, you can see the Easter Bunny in Animal Crossing. Yeah. Um, and then they said that later in, in April there's going to be, like, a uh, an Earth Day event and a few other things. So, like, it's cool that they're continuing the updates with these regular content releases because time travelers can't experience this stuff. 
like they're they're gating the holidays behind like updates so you have to just wait for these times to happen which is really cool actually uh, yeah um because like i said i think time traveling is is important for a few things but i'm not one of those that wants to just like blow through the game um i just wanted to unlock a few things to make it easier for me when i stopped time traveling um but I think it's really cool that they kind of know that that's a function and are not letting you experience holidays early or anything like that. Yay. And it gives it kind of a games to service approach too. Because it's like you get, you know, exclusive content during those times that you can use to like craft yeah. exclusive items. And then after that time, like whoever doesn't have those, uh, those like blueprints and stuff can't do the DIY recipes, I guess what they're called, can't do them. And that's kind of neat. Yeah, and it's like a week long too, which is uh, nice. it's like twelve days, I think. But yeah, well, more yeah. than a week, um, almost two, two weeks. Anyway, shy of two uh, days. Next, we got what I think might be a new Nintendo game um, called Good Job, which is kind of cool. It's got that quirky like Untitled Goose Game mentality, where it's like you can complete objectives in any way you want. It also kind of has a similar art style, um, but it's like. You can either do things the safe, like, efficient way, uh, or you can, like, re wreak as much chaos as you want, and it just costs costs the company a bunch of money. Um, so, like, there's multiple ways to do everything, and the way you do it determines, like, the grade you get and how expensive that thing was. Um, it's kind of fun. I don't know. And I think this is also available now. Um, I didn't mention, but the Shin Shinseki Into the Depths, whatever, is available now. Um, yeah, Good Job is also available now. And then we've got, uh, Catherine, Full Body. Uh, the weird, um, puzzle, puzzle platformer. platformer in your underwear game. Yeah, it's just so fucking niche. <laughs> uh, this game came out with, like, the 360, like, ten years ago. Yeah, and it's, like... Yeah. But this is a remake? It's so niche, and yet still so popular that I don't understand it. Because the full yeah, body came out on PS4. Uh, like, last year or something like that. And it's a it's yeah. a remaster yeah. with some new content added. And so now, like, that random game is ported to the Switch. And it's still just as weird. Like, there's no new content or anything. But, like, I remember people playing, like, loving playing this, like, ten years ago. And I didn't understand yeah. it then. And I still don't understand why it's popular. I'm, I remember Gerard's review of it and just, like, how maddening, like, higher levels got him. Oh, like, yeah. Fuck that noise. Yeah, it's weird. It's, like, it's a dating sim type thing. Dating but, sim slash puzzle yeah. platformer. Which is... And, like, God, all the like women are named Catherine. Sims, man. Just fuck you, Atlas. Right. People like dating sims. It's strange. Yeah. Um, Leave them alone. The probably one of my most like hype announcements in this direct is the Ring Fit Adventure update. That looks so. Like, this is really man. cool. They introduced yeah. a rhythm yeah. mode um, where you basically move, like you turn the Ring Fit and like squeeze it in or, or pull it out to match the rhythm of Hell different yeah, that's songs. What she said. Um, and it's full. Of, <laughs> wow. It's full of a bunch of different uh, Nintendo songs. And you also have to, like, do squats sometimes to, like, go lower to, to match and then, like, move <clears> up to, you know, go higher and stuff. Um, but it's a, full of a bunch of different Nintendo songs, like Jump Up Superstar. Um, there's uh, some, like, Zelda songs, like some Breath of the Wild songs in there, some Splatoon songs and all kinds of stuff. Um, mm. but yeah, it's, like, a totally new mode to play the game. Like, at a time when people are at home trying to find ways to exercise. Like, it's amazing. Yeah. Um, and then they also introduced, like, a few other things into the game, uh, like a female voice track for the, uh, the ring companion, um, and a free runner mode. Different, um, yeah. That, it's, it's, like, essentially a jogging mode without all the combat and stuff. So you can go through some of the different, um, the different levels and stuff without having to worry about the breaks in gameplay. You can just jog freely. So, like, this is the perfect kind of time to release this update. Like, it's, it's really cool yeah. they did this. And it's actually good content, too. Um, I'm going to have to jump back into it. Now that I'm, you know, healed from my hernia, mostly. Um, still hurts sometimes, but it's... I'm sure that's not going to go away for a while. Uh, the next one is called... King's Bounty? Is that what it is? Yeah, King's Bounty yeah. 2. Which... 
I fell asleep during this. The one. game looks pretty jank. And I don't know the original game. Like, is this a remaster or is this a sequel to like an old game? It's a sequel. I think it's a sequel. Because like they made it sound like it's a Switch game. Like it's, you know, exclusive. But it looks jank. Like it looks like a PC port or something. Let me like They were they were PC games. King's Bounty 2 was? Um, actually, I think there might be like three or four of them, but it is a sequel to the first one. Huh. I don't know. It's coming this year, but the the trailer they showed, like in their official trailer or official channel, looks pretty rough. So I can't imagine the actual game will look much better. Um, but you know, it's a yeah, tactical no like strategy RPG. Like people love those. So there's yeah, that. I've got like uh, like three versions of King's Bounty here, but no King's Bounty two. Uh, no. Okay, so They're it must be like, a new game. It's always like King's Bounty, The Legend, King's Bounty, Cross Worlds, King's Bounty, Armored Princess. Uh, yeah, that's what I have here. Okay. So I don't know if it's a Switch, which, Switch exclusive or not. They didn't say, like, timed exclusive or anything like that. But it just looks rough. I don't know. Um, it is a fully 3D, like, you know, kind of story focused, like tactical RPG. So I'm sure there's an audience for it, and they'll, they'll love it. It looks too generic it does. to me. That was yeah. my. It's a style of game you don't see anywhere else. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Next, we have the sixth um, Smash DLC fighter announcement, kind of. Um, they basically said that they need more time to uh, develop the character before they officially announce it. But it will be both released and announced in June. And the character is from ARMS. Yeah! So everyone, the, the three people that loved ARMS are finally getting their rep. Oh, wow. The audio peaked. Holy shit. Yeah, it did. <laughs> uh, but like Springman is like a, a desist trophy, right? Yeah. So, so it's probably out. not him. Uh, the, the favorites to me are... To me... It's the girl. Are either going to be Twintel, which is the booty girl, mm. uh, or uh, Ribbon Ribbon Girl, who's sort of the Chun Li oh, to yeah. String Man's Ribbon Ryu. Girl's pretty popular. So, yeah, I wanted to be Min Min. Uh, she was my main, so that's who I'm hoping mm. for. But if it is Ribbon Girl or or Twintel, I'll be happy with either. I just hope it's one of the female characters. I think and it's going to be a female. Like they've they've heard the complaints so. of not enough female DLC characters. Yeah, the o- the other character who it could be is the boss character Max something. I can't remember his like actual name, but like, he's the champion. He's the one you fight at the end of the at the end of arcade mode. He he's also a playable fighter. He could be in there. The ninja one I heard is pretty popular. But I, I do like the ninja one. One of the third girls. Yeah, I hope it's one of the girls. Um, I've heard like, some rumors kids. that like the the vagueness, which you know this is this is Nintendo fans going crazy, obviously, but the vagueness of the release and like the fact that it shows like the whole roster makes them think that it's going to just be kind of like a like a reskin An amalgamation so like you you know it's it's like a bowser jr situation that could work considering the only difference between the arms characters theoretically is the arms themselves right. um like like the only the only one who couldn't work like that would be the one who's literally a goo monster yeah um because he just he's, yeah, weird. he's weird but you you could do that and i would be like each each skin has like a different like pr- property a different fan or a different yeah. arm which could be interesting kind of like like a like an extension of echo fighters yeah i would be i would be okay with that but i mean even if it's like you know basically the eight different skins or whatever it is is all different characters that's still most of the roster yeah that's that's pretty that would be pretty neat i actually like that solution versus like just choosing yeah. one rep um you know and that could also be why it's taking them longer to make it yeah because kirby's gotta suck all them up <laughs> mm-hmm. but yeah uh they're also doing a an ain uh arms game trial uh so it's free for like two weeks through uh for nintendo online members um I which you know that's cool i guess uh, i honestly missed this announcement in the direct apparently but i, I played like the the open punch or whatever it was called like back before the game came out yeah. and i just didn't really Beta. care for it it wasn't my style i wish i stuck with it um just so much other shit was coming out yeah it was it was fun though it was unique yeah it was unique. it's i mean if you're worth a try well it's free for sure 
um, for anyone that's interested. But I don't see a reason to try it again. Justin, which island should I pick? I don't know. <laughs> They're randomized for you. I want to pick the bottom right one. Okay. Oh, it's randomized. Okay. Yeah, like your four aren't the same as my four. I thought they were all the same. No. Okay. There's a bunch of different ones. Uh, anyway, next we've got the... <laughs> That's how much I care about arms. Right. Next we've got the oh. game of the hour, for me at least. Uh, one we've talked about plenty already. Bravely Default 2. Um, so, like I said, you know, when I was talking about the demo, it doesn't, as far as I can tell, it doesn't introduce a lot of new features from the 3DS versions. Uh, the gameplay is fairly similar. The battle system's fairly similar. Um, but it's a more modernized version of it, and it just looks really nice. Uh, I was kind of hoping for, like, a Final Fantasy situation where, you know, the next numbered sequel would be, like, a complete change-up. And, like, it has si similar elements to the world and stuff, but, like, it brings in a new combat system and things like that. But it's not doing that. It's still the Brave and Default system. Um, you know, you can stack, like, so many... Uh, so many attacks in a row, and then you have to default on the, the next few until you get back to zero. It's a cool system, though, so it's fine. Um, I don't know if... I don't think this was an ability before, but you can, like, cut grass in the overworld and get, like, items and stuff from it. No, no, because the, oh, they're almost pretty much like a painting. You yeah, it's def over. it's a lot more, like, interactive now. Um, yeah. And, like, enemies are on the overworld, so you can actually, like, slash at them to get an advantage... Uh, when your combat starts, uh, or you can attack them from behind to, you know, get like a preemptive strike, like that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, the new characters are awesome. The game is beautiful. Uh, like this is like when I first saw that announcement trailer, like mid last year or whatever, this is exactly what I was hoping the game was going to be. Um, it's everything you love about the Bravely Default series, but even prettier. Um, like I said, I'm a little mm -hmm. weirded out by the mix of gameplay styles and stuff. Or, sorry, the mix of art styles. But, like, it looks so pretty, I don't care. It just feels strange to mix, like, the 2D and 3D and kind of just, like, throw things together like that. Um, but it does still have all the different jobs and stuff. You still, like, go on side quests to get, like, optional uh, asterisks, I think they're called. Um, and... It does seem like there's a few new features, like there's a weight system where uh, your, like, your total equipped armor and stuff, and like weapons all, has to be under your weight or else you'll be like over encumbered and um, have uh, detriments to your stats, which is kind of weird. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it's kind of hard to explain just from like what's shown here and the demo and stuff. But, like I said before, I definitely recommend people check out the demo. Um, there's some cool stuff here. I like the, the specialties each job has. And they also have, like, special abilities that activate, like, I guess automatically when you meet the, um, the requirement. So it could be, like, you know, use this special ability, like, five times and you'll use this, like, you know, awesome attack or whatever. Um, all kinds of stuff. But, yeah, the game's great. Uh, and it's also coming out later this year. They're going to take feedback from the demo and making and finishing up the game. But I would guess it's probably going to be a holiday release. Like probably September to December, somewhere in there. Uh, I hope so. I need time to play Xenoblade. Yeah, I mean, it's it's fairly polished like in demo form. But I'm sure that's like a polished chunk of the game. And it's, you know, bound to change. But uh, next we've got... A bunch of tabletop classics in one collection. There's like 51 games in this collection. Um, and while it's boring to most people, I'll agree, uh, it's kind of perfect for the Switch. Like they show like multiplayer where you're just like hovered over a table, like, you know, with the Switch in handheld mode, like playing together locally. And that's kind of neat. Uh, some of the modes yeah. also have online play and like it's got pretty much everything from Wii Sports. Like, there's bowling, there's golf, there's tennis, like, all, all kinds of stuff. And there's, like, you know, a bunch of tabletop games, like, uh, Chinese Checkers, um, Backgammon, a bunch of random stuff I've never heard of, like, Texas Hold'em, Dominoes. you never heard of Texas no. Hold'em? for real? I've heard of that. 
I was saying a bunch of things I've never, never heard of, and then Texas Hold'em and so on. It didn't sound like that to me, buddy, but okay, Buckaroo. Whatever. Um, also, you can, like, play online with people by just picking three games and then, just, like, joining up with other people. Like, there's some cool stuff here. And the fact that it's 51 games put together in a collection, like, this is going to be great for families and stuff. Uh, my mom was actually yeah, thinking about... Trapped inside! Yeah, exactly. <laughs> my mom, a while back, was thinking about getting a Switch, mostly for uh, Mario Kart, because she loves Mario Kart. And she was wondering if there was any other games that she'd be interested in. So I was kind of doing some research and stuff. And, like, this is the kind of thing that would probably appeal to her, because it's a bunch of games in one. Um, some of these things, they have, like, like a... Uh, uh, like a life game and Monopoly and things like that. They're like 40, 50 bucks for one game. Um, so, yeah. The point is, there's an audience for this. Snore all you want. Uh, but it comes out this summer. Yo, I got apples in my village. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you. Um, next, we have Ninjala, I think it's called. Oh, uh, yeah. It lo- this, yeah, this is fun. It's Bubblegum Splatoon. It. Yeah, that's what I thought. It has that energy, but it's not Nintendo. It's a uh, gung ho right. Entertainment. But it looks like a Splatoon clone that Nintendo just is putting on their system, which is funny. Yeah. That's yeah, all it's right. Got some cool stuff in there for sure. Like the ninja skills you use and the different uh, different types of weapons, and I don't know. Th- this is another one there will be an audience for, especially since I think it's free to play, isn't it? Yes, yeah, it's free to yeah. play. So I'm sure there's going to be much microtransaction crap in it. Probably have costume aesthetics like most, most right. Most but I guess this was like a mobile game or something that the Switch is picking up. Um, most likely. But yeah, it's neat. Whatever. Gung Ho is known for like generic mobile game cash in stuff, but that's fine. Uh, also, they had kind of a sizzle reel of various things. There was uh, another Jedi Knight Jedi Academy game, excuse me, which uh, is available now. And they announced Star Wars Episode One Racer, which is super hype. That's it's coming that's soon. So cool. Um, then they announced some some garbage. What what what? How do you how do you pronounce it? Panzer Dragon. What is this game? I will leave this call. You <laughs> clown. I've, I've never heard of this, but it's, it's some crappy light rail. Yeah, you probably yeah you probably you probably haven't heard of it because Sega fucked yeah. up in the mid. But whatever this 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 Pants Dragon game is, it comes out. It's also available now. It's available now. Go buy it, even though it's only two hours. <laughs> Pants Dragon. Um, <laughs> they had a brief trailer for Trials of Mana, which I talked about the demo for. It's great. Check that out. Um, but it comes out late next month. I'm excited. Uh, then they had Fuser, which Damn. is that new harmonics game, I believe. It's like uh, like NCSoft. DJ mixing. Um, Elder Scrolls Blades, which is garbage. No one cares. Uh, Warhammer 40,000 Mechanicus, which I've never heard of, but I assume it's just a take on the Warhammer. Congrats, Warhammer guys. You got your game. Right. Warhammer 40k, sure. Uh, Vigor, which is another, like, online shooter, I think probably, uh, uh, player unknown Battlegrounds type game. Uh, Burnout Paradise Remastered, which looks kind of gross on Switch, but it's going to be 60 frames a second, so that's cool. If you don't already have it, uh, Saints Row 4, we already knew about, but it comes out today as of this recording. So that's also available now. Uh, I'm literally watching the direct and announcing these things, by the way. Um, Legend of Heroes Cold Steel 3, I think is what that said. I don't, I've never heard of that. Yes. yes. Um, a new Mr. Driller game is coming in a few months. That was yeah. shocking. Like just to kind of shadow drop here, like Mr. Driller is like a Nintendo franchise, isn't it? No PlayStation, but it was on Game Boy Advance. Was it? I don't fucking know. I know. I just oh, no, thought I was it was thinking on the of PS1 classes. So. Never mind. Okay. Yeah, that's PS1 yeah, boy. I guess so. Uh, Minecraft Dungeons, which was just announced as delayed because the developers are all working from home trying to finish it, but it's coming in spring sometime. Uh, and then they had one more thing. Uh, which was some more information about the Pokemon Sword and Shield DLC, the first pack um, that sees you going to the Isle of Armor. Um, you get a little, what is it called? Cub Fu? Um, yeah. From the Battle Tower person, basically. Like, it's introducing the Battle Tower, let's be honest. Um, and he gives you a Cub Fu. You take that Cub Fu through one of the different Battle Towers. 
Uh, and you have to take it in by itself. So, like, you don't have any other Pokemon with you. Um, and depending on which... So it's not the Battle Tower. It's basically the Battle, t- battle Tower. No I'm sure after you beat it, you can go in with others. Okay. I will hold you to I don't know for sure. But it's new story content that is like a Battle Tower. Um, and Or like that, that weird Bellsprout Tower in 2nd Gen. Um, anyway. Depending on which tower you take it to, depends on which uh, version of Urshifu your Kung Fu evolves into. Um, which is kind of a cool mechanic. And once you choose the tower, you can't unchoose it. So you have to know which one you want to get before you go in. Um, they also showed off the new dynam- uh, the new Gigan to Max forms of your uh, Gen 8 starters. None of them look that great, but none of them are that great. So, you know, there's that. Um, Inteleon is pretty neat. I, just the, I mean, the whole... I'm a sure, if you if they really are going to do the third Pokemon Gun, he'd be a cool you know poster child oh, for yeah, that yeah. game. But I, buy I feel weird about a sniper. Oh, Thomas, you're still here. Yeah, I, I put down my tent by the way. Oh, cool. Uh... It's right by the river, right by the campsite. And then they also announced that there's going to be an event right now, uh, like for the foreseeable future, that will see more. Um, Kaparaja and Duraludon Gigantamax forms available in Sword, and more uh, Garbodor yeah. and Charizard Gigantamax forms available in Shield in Raids and stuff right now. Too bad that whole thing is garbage. Garbodor? Yeah, I know. He's literal garbage. Well, the whole thing, just, ugh. It, yeah, the Raids He's aren't just... great. Uh, but yeah, I mean, for being called Nintendo Direct Mini, like, people had high expectations of, like, where's the new Zelda? Where's Metroid? Blah, blah, blah. Like, it's a mini. It's, like, you know, temper your expectations. I thought it was actually a really good show. It quite a bit. Yeah, exactly. I got, I'm, I got what I wanted. Fuck y'all. <laughs> yeah. Like, they had a lot of games. Like, it was all stuff coming, like, probably in the first half of this year, except maybe Bravely Default 2, but that still had a demo out now. Um... And, like, it's solid third-party support right here. Like, they really didn't show much in the way of first-party, except for the updates to Animal Crossing and Pokemon Sword and Shield. And those weren't even, like, they're not new games. All the new games were third-party. That's kind of awesome. Um, so, like, I thought it was a good show. But I wasn't expecting the big, you know, the heavy hitters anyway. The fact that we got, like, Smash News was super surprising. I, I wouldn't have expected that. But, yeah. That's the that's the direct mini. One of my neighbors, he's a rhino, and his name is Tank. I love him. Nice. That's perfect that's awesome. for you. That's awesome. Who's your other it one? Is, uh, some mouse, I think. Oh, I don't like the mice. <laughs> Alright. Uh, so let's move on to some other news, I guess. Or we can just end this here. I mean. Is there any news we're talking about? Uh, the Xbox Series X graphics source code was stolen and being held for a hundred million dollar ransom. Oh yeah! Oh yeah, I yeah. didn't read this. <laughs> I just posted it a lot yesterday. I forgot I posted uh, it. Let's see. I linked Scumbag IGN. So. So I don't understand this. Like, how are they holding the source code ransom? They stole it. Right, but I mean, like, what? What's the importance of that? We're not smart enough to know. No, we're not. A- Xbox doesn't have it anymore. They would. I think it has to do. It. Yeah, they can sell it in like hack Xboxes and shit. I think. Yeah. Is threatening to dump the entirety of the stolen data if a buyer isn't found. Let me Google. Okay. What happens if you get your source codes? Oh, uh, Google doesn't know. Oh. <laughs> well, then let's She's move so on. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't see why that's a big deal. Especially not like a hundred million dollars worth of a big deal. I'm just more like, how the fuck did it get stolen? That's that's what I want. They know. probably put it on Ooh. their friggin' OneDrive. <laughs> you know, you could, you could, you could encourage me and like, oh, it's some like insider shit. Nah, it's probably just some employee being an idiot. That's that's not fun. 
It's not fun. Um, yeah, we don't know what that actually means. If you know, send us send me an email, Thomas at Charshot.com, so we can actually take this serious if it needs to be serious. Um Yeah, I don't know. I mean we don't even that know if it's so real weird. or not. They're I think they're acting like it's not. Well, yeah, they're not going to come... Xbox is not going to come out like, our source codes. They're not going to say that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. It's like when the military, when, when a tragic tragedy happens, like, it, was a, it, was a, it was a test. It was a, it was a, it was a exercise. That's what they always say. Apparently, like AMD that. issued a DMCA takedown notice on the repository where the data was being held. Mm. So. Information is everything, bitches. Hmm. Uh, speaking of shit getting stolen and vanishing, Mortal Kombat 9 vanishes from the Steam store. PS3 multiplayer server has been shut down. That's actually false. Um, oh, okay. That is false. Cool. Yeah, Ma- Maximilian Dude, uh, Max, went into it. Uh, you can't buy it off Steam. You can still play it on Steam. Uh, you can still do player matches and rank matches on MK9. How about on, on PS3? PS3? On PS3, you can, yeah. You can? They did it. You can. Okay. They like if for some reason the message today wasn't coming up, but like you know. So technically, it's not uh, false. You cannot, the game the... did quietly vanish from the Steam store. No, that is true. That's not untrue. Like you can't buy saying, it. Like, the whole you can still play it. Right. Yeah. 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 You can still play. It's it. like when Alan uh, Wake got uh, taken down. You couldn't buy it. Yeah. But you can still play yeah. it. Yeah. A lot. A lot of there's there's nothing coming out officially, but a lot of speculations of the fact that, uh, namely the specifically the Steam version is uh or and not necessarily Xbox PS3 or Xbox. Um, although who knows that might happen soon is that Freddy Krueger uh, licensing thing might be mm. an issue. Yeah, that's usually why that happens. That's why you shouldn't shove so many third party characters into your game. Yeah, which like it led Max to kind of like be paranoid about what about MKX, considering that has Leatherface, Predator, and Alien in all yeah. in that game. Mm-hmm. So you know, like what? Ha- I mean, the game is also and eventually MK11 nine. Yeah. Eventually, MK- well, the game. This game is also nine years old, so like I'm still amazed that the servers are still up for it. Um, it's still a solid, but uh, even in it's, yeah, no, it's it's great. Um, but like, it, like it's 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 awful. Um, I don't think it's good for preservation wise. But at the end of the day, like if you have MK9, you probably have MK9 right by now. Like that's the thing is a lot of people freak out when games disappear from the store, but like they almost never disappear from your library. Like they're not taking the game away from you. Yeah, it's just like an inability to purchase it, but chances are you right. had it. It's like, oh no, I can't buy K-9. this nine-year-old game. I was waiting for just the right opportunity. You can, and the thing is, you could still probably find a used copy somewhere of MK9 yeah. for for PS3, Xbox 360 for sure. Or like Max speculated that it might maybe they're gonna port it to newer systems. I don't know why they would do that, yeah, considering they would rather push MK11. Um, but who knows. So, speaking of which, uh, Mortal Kombat 11 email seemingly leaks Evil Dead's Ash as a DLC character. Really hate that I know that. I really hate that I know that now. I did know that before, but I know it now. Thanks, Justin. I mean, it's news. I didn't, I didn't, I, yeah, but like, hey, remember the trepidation I had of like not wanting to know who the DLC fighters <laughs> were for last <laughs> to reveal? But like, hey, let's just put this in the notes. Ben's not gonna. S- oh, no. yeah, great. Because I exactly my my rationale okay. was the the last time there was this big leak, it was just literally like a data mine, like not necessarily real type thing. This is Sorry. official documentation that went out to the public. So that's like in tiny ass print. <laughs> you can't. You have to like look. I I looked at it by the well, way, which is public like, nonetheless. All, right. It's yeah. It's no. It's public. I'm. The, it's just like hey. Might want to hide, like, hey, Ben, don't look at this. Put it in spoiler text. You may not want to read this for who might be in Combat Pack 2. But um, I'm not going to... Uh, it's already said. It's... Never mind. What it's am I not... Um, but yeah. I thanks. mean, we talked about this, like, a long time ago. And you knew. Like, you said, oh, yeah, I heard no, about the no, spoiler like, about Yeah, this. but it turned out to be not true. It turned out to be not true because he wasn't Which in. Which turns out to be one. true. That was... No, the, the, le- the data mine was for, like... DLC characters in the data. It wasn't necessarily just for pack one. Because it was like 11 characters in that or something. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. I just didn't I didn't need to know Ash was going to be. I mean, there. he might not be. But this is official yeah. correspondence, so it's worth mentioning. Somebody didn't... An intern's getting fired. Like, sometimes, you know, spoilers come out in the news. It happens. Yeah, well... 
Why, Ash? Like, I'm he's sorry. He's better than Terminator. Why? No, he's not. At least Terminator's a robot. Ash is just a dude with a chainsaw arm. Which the is, movies are great, badass. but like... But he has, like, supernatural powers with the Necronomicon. Does... Does he... Army does of he Darkness, though? Ash does. I don't care about... Whatever. That's why they specify AS. Army of Darkness. I'd ra- Look, if he's the only one... Because I don't know who the other characters are, but if he's the only one, uh, that's fine. But I swear to God, bring some classic characters back. Put Reptile back in this game. Well, Reptile's not going to be in the game because he's part of whoever. Shang Tsung, right? That, could, that doesn't mean shit. So are, so are Sub-Zero and Scorpion technically in this Fatal Blow. Are they? They're in the game. I haven't seen that, I guess. I was thinking about like the different new forms. Cybot, new it's like, uh Reptile, Ermac, and Smoke, right? Yeah. Rain. 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 And smoke. Rain and smoke. Yeah, that doesn't mean they can't model out a new character for it. Like an like an MKL. Because that's that's their like that's using their MK9 ninja yeah. designs. All I'm saying is put some classic characters in there. Like you had to deal the two like stars with Terminator and, and Spawn and um Joker. Who's the other one? Joker. Like Yeah, there was a stupid some... amount of, of side characters in DLC pack one. Yeah, I mean, I liked. I mean, Spawn's great, and I like them. I think Spawn fits more than the, more than Ash, but like, let's let's let this let, let's make this the classic combat pet. Let's get Melina back in here. Let's get Reptile. Let's get Ermac. Let's get let's get some ninjas. Damn it! Sorry. I think the rest. I'm not gonna like, bug Edwin's Twitter. And again, I'm not going from leaks or anything. I'm just going from my own like point of view here. I think right, a right. majority of the next pack are gonna be classics. Like probably classics we haven't seen in a while. I, I don't so. see us getting Reptile. Yeah. Or maybe Melina, but I want my not. Green Ninja. Because yeah. they are they I gave mean, Jade Mal- Melina's Malina attacks, right? Yeah, Katana has in one of her variations. Katana, that's right. Melina is less like a bit I Yeah. Um But like Takeda, like honestly, Takeda it's yeah, surprising me cool. that Takeda's not in this I game. Know. Like, like he's one who should come back. The other care. Fuck them. I don't care. Um, like, but like, yeah, I love <sighs> to get it back. Just, just one bed. Just one, like, n- surprised guest party. Get let's let's get some other Mortal Kombat characters. I mean, the main roster is, is good in terms of Mortal Kombat roster, but like, I want my ninjas. back. I want another game. Okay, give me my ninjas back. Rep. Who, who, who? Kenshi, maybe? Kenshi's technically... I mean, yeah. Kenshi's technically dead, but f- fucking everybody's well, dead. Yeah, I mean, it's time travel. Point, Whatever. So. But, yeah, I mean, like, matter. we got Frost. Like, that's awesome. And she's the best she's ever been. So I want to see them yeah. remix another character like I mean, that. Hell, who else is... Yeah, who else is cool enough to even warrant any of that stuff, though? A lot of a lot of that... a lot. Don't lie. A lot of those characters from that era are garbage. True. Uh, um, I mean, there's like, there's a few unique ones like Natara, Fujin, uh, Fujin would be, Fujin would be the one. Fujin would be the I mean, one. Bo Rai Cho is technically from that era, but I didn't really, I hate yeah, him. Don't. I thought no, it was weird they brought him back in no, MKX. God. So yeah. stupid. Ugh. Um, there's, there's another one I can't think of the name right now. Fujin, Fujin, I think in terms of the 3D era, Fujin would be number one. Because he was like, a, he was a story character. Like that would make sense. Plus, yeah. they don't really have like yeah. wind representation. No. Well, Katana's fans yeah. can do that, but Sendell to an extent. Yeah, kind of with the whole, yeah. But like I said, most of the PS2 GameCube era, that whole era, they were was functions. Trash. Most of it like the, they like there was a Shara that was like a you know function of Raiden. It was Frost that was Sub-Zero. Like, yeah, they they were, you know, acolytes of their mentors. But there's some cool characters in there that have been forgotten. Like, can, they, they brought Kinchi back. Like, if they brought Kinchi back, I think that'd be yeah. cool. Because I think, I think he'd be cool. Especially, like, with Takeda. But Takeda... Yeah, Takeda and, and Fujin are number, or should be number one and two priority. Okay. Anyway... All right. Uh, so Mike in the chat said uh, the source code was actually for AMD GPUs, which is related uh, to current and current versions. It could reveal security faults. So it would oh. be like for hacking the system then. Yeah, I, 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 just AMD GPUs in general. 
So anyone with the GP A and D system. system would be. Uh, oh, that would suck for me then. Uh, so if they if that gets released out to the public, we're all fucked. <laughs> Everyone with well, AMD. AMDs, yeah. I probably have an AMD. I have an AMD. I have an AMD. I'm fucked. I have a good old Nvidia. Psh. Look at me. Look at me having Nvidia, man. I'm not gonna get hacked. I'm gonna get hacked. I mean, Nvidia was hacked first, mm. to be fair. <laughs> 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 Who did it first? Uh, okay. It's that scene in the office with the finger gun. So, like Mexican standoff. So he off. says, no worries. Oh, no, never mind. Uh, either way, security patches might be on the way for those systems. Yeah. That's good. All right. Like, knowing that so it's out know. there, they could it's just so, patch it instead of It's still of wild, though. If we had Lowe back on the show, he would have known. Probably. He would have told us all about this. Yeah. How do we know, how do, how do we know somebody inside Lowe's studio didn't steal it? Mm, conspiracy. Let's do it. I had to cut that from the show. <laughs> oh, do you? <laughs> I don't know. Damn it. <laughs> I don't know. Definitely Randy. Anyways, next news story that I have here. Oh, yeah. By the way, you asked me about my other one. It was actually a koala named Canberry, which looks fucking ugly. Oh. <laughs> um, Phil Spencer leaked Can- it. There you go. That's Barry. my Phil Spencer theory. <laughs> Villager. Um, so Epic Canberra. Games Publishing and... Uh, what? Canberra. Oh, yeah. yeah. Canberra, kinda, whatever. Kind of gross. Fucking garbage character. D- Damn. Y'all are rude to your villagers. That's I like amazing. the good-looking villagers. Uh, yeah. Man. I love Eugene, and I also have, uh... Crap, what's his name? I would think, like, I don't know about you guys, but I was ostracized for my looks in Rex. high school. And, like, I would hate to ostracize other people in a fuck. It's a video game. Who cares? Yeah, yeah. Right. So mean! Yeah, no one cares. Um, I also have Rex, who's a cool lion. I love him. Oh, that sounds cool. Yeah. Um, all right. So Epic Games Publishing announces partnerships with the uh, Gen Design, Play Dead, and Remedy Entertainment. Uh, I'll just break down the three bullet points of what they share uh, with us here. So the deal goes like this. Developers will have full creative freedom and ownership. They'll retain 100% of intellectual property and full creative control of their work. Uh, the projects will be fully funded. Epic Games Publishing will cover 100% of development costs from developer salaries to go to market expenses such as QA, localization, marketing, and all publishing costs. That's insane. And they'll have a 50-50% uh, profit sharing. Developers earn a fair share of their work. Once costs are recouped, developers earn at least 50% of all profits. Uh, this is an insane deal for developers. Yeah. Like, I've never heard of something I like mean, this before. I mean, Epic bought these studios, essentially, <clears throat> and is letting them keep all ownership of the things they make. They didn't even buy them. They're just like, here, have all this money to, for your games. Well, that's what I said, and... basically. Like, it's it's yeah. essentially the way buying a studio works, except they don't own anything the studio makes. Right. It's insane. They're just funding it. It's insane. And then, uh, like, the, you know, there's the whole bit about once costs are recouped, developers earn at least 50% of all profits. But that's just basically saying, like, we want to make sure the the games get their money back, but then we share. It's not even saying, like, hey, we're going to get what's ours, and then you get what's yours. It's just, let's break even, and then we'll split the profits. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's still really impressive. Yeah, it's an insane deal. Um, And I really like these uh, two developers here, uh, Playdead and Remedy. I don't know anything about gen design, though. Yeah. Um, apparently they made The Last Guardian, so there's that. Oh, okay. So there you go. So are they like uh, Ico and Shadow of Colossus people then? I guess so. I thought they were a Sony studio. Yeah. I guess mm. not. Hmm. Yeah, well, nobody's a Sony studio now with all their games coming to PC. <laughs> <laughs> For real. Cry, fanboys, cry. Yeah, the Horizon, we talked about last week how the Horizon thing was uh, legit. You know, I'm talking about how like people freaking out because uh, God of War didn't have the only on PS4 listing, and I just saw helpless little PS4 bitches just cry and cry and cry. <laughs> oh, please bring their games to PC just so I can see that world burn. Please. Uh, I don't see that one happening. Sorry. I don't know. I mean, I, I I don't either, but I just want to see the world burn oh, yeah, at this sure. point. At least, at least, because I hate I hate when I go to the Twitter fucking like thing and I look up the gaming tag and I always get one obnoxious Sony fucking like oh, we're the best or like hashtag PS4 gaming and I'm like I fucking hope you lose all your fucking exclusives, you fucking clowns. <laughs> Anyways, so arrogant. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I block all those people. 
Yeah, so, like, I just want to, like, say how, you know how, like, A3 and all that was canceled? Uh, this is where the, these kind of deals get made. Yeah. Like, pe- like, people can have meetings with Epic and, like, pitch their games and get funded by them and stuff like that. So now they're so, probably just having Zoom meetings on their own. <laughs> For real. Everyone's using Zoom now. Yeah. Which, I think... There was a report that came out that they share all of your all of their data or, or all of your data to Facebook, no matter what. Oh, fun! So <laughs> that's great. Um. Anyways, uh, another announcement regarding Plague Inc. Uh, they announced a new mode where players save the world from a deadly disease, <laughs> uh, and they've also donated two hundred fifty thousand dollars to help fight the coronavirus. That's good, and demonetized again. <laughs> That is pretty good, though. Like, the, you know, the game that everyone, like, that, that was getting taken down all over the place for, you know, encouraging this kind of, like, pandemic outbreak uh, overreaction. There's a board game called Pandemic. Yeah, I know. There is. Probably. that They haven't been in the news as much as... Uh, because it's a board game. Though. It's not as customizable. Um, like, you know, that that game is now, like, putting out efforts to fight the pandemic that got their game taken out from a lot of places <laughs> like that's really cool yeah i thought that was that was pretty neat yeah uh and then breaking news uh ryan reynolds and talks to tackle live action adaptation of the 80s video game dragon slayer so this was just kind of a fun yeah. thing that i saw like was literally trending when we started um and he will be producing and starring in a Dragon's Lair movie for Netflix. Um, the deal was just closed after like a year of negotiations, which is kind of insane. Oh, is it? I wonder if it's going to be animated. Or this is live action. Yeah. action. Oh, it's so like okay. he's going to be the, you know, the main guy, which is just going to be his character. But like that kind of works for something like this. I guess very tongue in cheek. I mean, yeah, I never played it, but I've seen it in Stranger Things. So yeah, hip. I've played it like at arcades and like it's hard. I mean. I'm not good at, like, figuring out when you're supposed to hit the buttons or whatever. The reaction. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I hope that, like, they basically use Space Ace as, like, a sequel to this, if it does well. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um, because... It's coming to Netflix, though. Right. Mm. Um, so you know it's quality. Yeah, I mean, so, some of their stuff is. Some of it is. A lot of their stuff is. Watch The Crown. Season 3 is out like now. Hashtag mm. not an ad. Um, Ozark season three also set in Missouri, not Ned. Um, anyway, <laughs> wait, the water company has a Netflix Ozark? show. Yeah, that's a that's a city. So what? So no, water it's a company. city slash lake. Because wait a minute, hold on. Ozark town water company. They're probably putting lead in the water. Just, just uh, maybe the water company comes from the Ozarks, which is like a giant, you know, like water system. I'm just saying, in Missouri. It, might, it might be like an underground lab. I don't think I'd like want water from the Ozarks time. though. It's pretty gross. Okay. It's been like the whole lake has been shut down multiple times for E. coli. I would not. Ozark it water in. utility building. Um, like my my former grandma. Who's, I mean, dead, but... Wait, for... Well, okay, no. I was like, how do you... Ha- it was, was my, like, my stepdad's mom. <laughs> you got the... You get the grandma on the divorce. <laughs> I mean, we kept in contact with her after the divorce, to be fair. But... <laughs> but no, it was my stepdad's mom. So, like, she was no longer my grandma, but also she's dead. So, in both meanings okay, of the word, like... you know, former grandma. Anyway. Fuck you, dad. You keep grandma. <laughs> Anyway, she Hi. had a house at the lake, uh, like at the Ozarks, that is. And we'd go down to the dock, and, like, there was a jet ski and a paddle boat and stuff like that. And, like, when I was a kid, we'd go down there and swim in the water and stuff, and I never knew how gross it was. Uh, but, yeah, the uh, Ozarks are disgusting. Um, anyway, okay. the show's great. Um, it's about drugs and stuff. And so, yeah, Dragon Slayer is what we're here for. Um, <laughs> are we? Are we really? So... <laughs> It's, I mean, it's going to be an adaptation of Dragon's Lair. I don't know what you want me to say. I I, I expect a lot of just Ryan Reynolds being Ryan Reynolds, and that's what we need. Right, exactly. Now. He's fun. He lo- I love his shtick. He was also in Hobbs and Shaw, by the way, and he's great. Yeah, what? he's great. Okay. I, I didn't know it before I started the movie, movie but... but he's great. That's a, that's a, 
I've, I would have think that would have been like all over the internet, but right? like, no. I don't think I've ever There's seen that There's a few awesome anywhere. cameos in that movie. He's not really a cameo, though. He's an actual character. Holy but, shit, yeah, that's funny. He's hilarious. Um, is he is he playing himself, Brian Reynolds? No, I mean, he's he playing he... a character. But, like, that character is basically himself. Oh, okay. He's like an old partner of Hobbes. Okay. Um, Isn't he also going to mm. be in a movie that's basically like GTA? Uh, yeah, it's called Free Guy. It looks pretty good. Yeah. Um, he's like, he's an NPC. Oh, yeah, in yeah, a, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. In a video game. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I want to see Space Ace follow up with this because I've been watching um, Space Dandy, which is an anime uh, with some of my friends. And it's like, it's Aww. great for one, but it kind of has that Space Ace vibe where it's like just absurdist, like, you know, sci-fi adventure, um, but with a lot more boobs. Um so I want to see like Ryan Reynolds play that character too. Like, you know, basically a totally different character, but like he looks exactly the same and he's in space and like, it's from the same people and like, it's essentially a sequel, but it's unrelated. I think that'd be fun. Um, I don't know as much about Dragon's Lair, but sure. I'm on board. <laughs> the deepest lore. I think that's All it. Right. Uh, huh? I think that's it. Yeah. Uh, Mike has a question for us. He oh. asks us, what's the most surprising game of 2020 so far? <sighs> like surprising announcement or surprising release? I guess release. Because we're not that far into it. I can already tell what Ben's is. Panzer Dragoon? Yeah. Pants Dragon? Mm-hmm. Ben? Yeah, like just out of fucking nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Randy, or- wait, Randy Orton, no! What? You say out of nowhere three times in the mirror, Randy Orton comes up from behind. <laughs> RKO out of nowhere, yeah. Uh, he says both, yeah. so announcement Damn or it. release. Either one. Um, well, obviously, yeah, Panzer Dragoon releasing today, like, just a few days ago. It's pretty great. Um, announcement, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 getting a definitive date of Memorial Day weekend. Fuck yeah, let's <laughs> go. Hundred hour game, and I hope the, the 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 epilogue content. By the way, you can play it at any point. They said that in one of their Twitter t- tweets that uh, you can pl- play it whenever you want. Um, so oh, I just want to revisit that world again. And there, there's it's gonna be so pretty. It's gonna be so pretty. Mm. Hmm. I can't think of anything. Sorry. Yeah, I haven't been terribly surprised. I, I mean, it's kind of been you know known quantities so far. Um. I guess, like, my... The closest I can think of to an answer, uh, which, by the way, was Axiom Verge announced this year, or was that, like, in a direct last year? That was late last year. That was last okay, year. Okay, then that doesn't count. Because um, that is coming this year, but I was going to say, like, the announcement of it was a surprise. Um, yeah, coming. Wow. But I think my really? answer would be the Mega Man Zero collection. Uh, Zero ZX collection. Because, like, I... I mean, I was excited for that to come out and it was a surprise last year that they announced it because i didn't feel like those games would be the most popular ones to come out next um but i also wasn't expecting to more popular than legends oh yeah that's true. Oh, but man. i figured battle network would be, would be next <laughs> um but anyway uh i wasn't expecting to actually get the game because like i mean i wanted to support them and all but like i played the first game I had dabbled with the others on on emulators, and I didn't really like the ZX game. So I was like, there's just not, you know, a like a value to me here. Uh, but I got it anyway, because I was kind of, I was feeling some Mega Man. Um, and, like, the fact that I was able to actually beat 2 and 3 was surprising enough. But, like, the fact that Mega Man Zero Three 3 is actually an incredible game, like, one of my favorite Mega Man games now, was really surprising. Um, I've fallen off on 4. No spoilers because I haven't beaten it yet. Hmm? I said no spoilers. Oh, no, I I, I won't. But it's very good. Um, But yeah, I I feel like I need to beat 4 before I move on to the ZX games. Because, like, it's their direct sequels to the Mega Man Zero series. But I just don't... Yeah, they are. I'm I'm not interested in 4 so far. Like, it's a major step back. So... Play it on easy mode. Just get I've thought about it. But I'm already, like, I'm a few in, and you can't change the difficulty after you've started your game. So, like, I just don't want to now. 
Start over and fucking find these emotes. No. There you go. I just solved your riddle for you, buddy. Plus, That'd like, $25. they changed the way that the um, the EX chips work, where you can't just, like, mash out the uh, A ranks like you could before um, with the, you know, the cyber elves that make you A rank whenever. Uh, you have to, like, beat the robot master under, like, less than ideal weather patterns that makes the whole level harder. Um, so it doesn't matter what, what rank you get in a level. It only matters that you beat it in the the bad weather um and i want the ex abilities Mm. so i've been trying to beat them all with the bad weather but it's just stupid the way that that affects the levels it's almost not worth it um so i'm kind of weighing like whether it's worth actually getting ex abilities or not which there's no elements in this game it's only the ex abilities that have elemental power so it's just it's annoying I don't like it, but I will say my surprise release of this year, like surprise in that how much I enjoyed it was Mega Man Zero Three. That's my answer. Thomas, uh, I don't have an answer. I don't remember being surprised about anything this year so far, like announcements or releases. Yeah, I was trying to think of an announcement, like something that's coming later this year, but I can't think of anything. Yeah. Most of the releases that I'm uh, like I'm interested in are like are were released were were announced last year, right? Rather. Same. So, because there's some surprises coming this year, but they're just not out yet. Mm-hmm. I will say that the 2K games coming to Switch was a surprise, but I mean that's not that exciting. So, to me at least, exactly right. Yeah. It's just surprising. Yeah. I don't have anything. I'll, I'll probably have something around June when they still do their announcements. Yeah. Even though E3 is canceled. Yeah, that's the problem. Is a lot of release or a lot of announcements have been delayed right now, so we haven't gotten much so far this year. Yeah. Um. I just can't wait until Final Fantasy VII. Yeah. That's funny. By the way, uh, physical copies have leaked, and there's shit out there. So watch. Oh, really? Out there, people. Uh. Yeah, that's for my friend, a friend who visit, who frequently visits the underbelly of the mm. internet, aka known as Reddit. Um, uh, apparently, there are stuff out there because people are assholes and just can't wait. Yeah. Even though you waited fucking fifteen goddamn whatever, I hate people who are fucking impatient bitches. <laughs> what are I you going to be spoiled on? Tired. That game's already that I mean, game's a lot of new content. story beats. They've made they they've made changes. They've they've changed things up. So like if you. And also, maybe you didn't play Final Fantasy VII and watch the hundreds of YouTube videos that are going to be spanned in your you sub box feed over the next six weeks. Maybe you just... Have, I mean, there's a generation of people that would not go enough, back to that garbage. Maybe you don't want to get spoiled and you want to go... Hey, like, hey. No, I don't mean the game is garbage. I mean the way it looked it's, back it's, then. It's, like, now is garbage. Those people watch YouTube videos of their favorite YouTubers playing that game, if they're interested. That's probably true. Yeah. All right, uh, that's gonna be it for the show. Thanks, Mike, for the question. Really good question. I it stumped me. I I, I still can't. Mike, it. the TV. <laughs> Got to um, it. Justin, where can people find you? You can find me if you look for Zero Score on Twitter or YouTube or Twitch slash Mixer. Um, I might put a video out soon. I've kind of just been chilling. Ben. Twitter.com slash Marvelous Iggy, where I am your not number one source for Panzer Dragoon content, but just occasionally, if I'm freaking out Panzer Dragoon, I'm okay. Don't call 911. I'm just napping. Bye. It's not like you said Panzer Dragon. And you can find me, your host, Thomas, on Twitter, CSU Thomas. I'm also on Twitch as Kane Plays Stuff. Uh, we host the show live there every week around 9 p.m. Eastern. Uh, check out the other show that I do, Voices of the Vanguard. It's Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern. Um, it's a good show. Listen. Thanks, Ben. He doesn't even like Destiny. Uh, <clears throat> right. And he listens. Unlike well, some people. No, I just don't. Pl- Justin. I don't I can't play, play it. it. If I could play it, if I could play it, I would play it with you, but I can't because I would get head problems. Uh, also, email me, Thomas, at trishot.com with your porn advertisements that will run on the site. Uh <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. If You're gonna get an offer now. You're gonna get another offer now. I mean, I yeah. am talking to that guy. I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do. 
Uh, <laughs> just slide into his DMs. I need money. It's tight times these days. Yeah, you know? yeah we're all going to die. Uh, <laughs> a lot of people are resorting to porn. Don't judge us. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, Nothing wrong with that. Also, Pornhub is classy, so it's, it's true. that. <laughs> yeah, the comments are wholesome for the they're most doing, part. They're doing the the whole free thing for COVID nineteen people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, rate us on iTunes. Five stars the better. Uh, um, I think that's it. Yeah, uh, we're also on Spotify. Check us out there. Until then, guys, enjoy your games and have a good night. Wash your Do you hands. think Pornhub content creators complain? About their platform as much as YouTube content is created about no. YouTube. No, 